Hello and welcome along to episode 32 of Veldania. Uh, I don't seem to have a theme tune. What a time to be alive. Um, let's try that again. There we go. Hello and welcome along to episode 32 of Veldania. Um, today I have playing with me... Hey, you've got a Christmas tree! Bruno! <laughs> Excited! I'm playing! Oh, sorry. Hello! I'm playing Alessio McPherson, someone who's currently having their daily rations. He's a battle master human fighter. That he is. I have Joe. Uh, I'm Joe, and I play Hennick Littlefield. He's a halfling farmer and bard. I have Josh. I'm Josh, and I play Sebastian Belmont, the abjuration wizard. I have Rico. I am Rico, and I'm playing Torn Goldenbrand, the golden dragonborn, golden paladin. He's just fucking gold all over the place. But <laughs> uh, I have Jamal. Hey guys, it's Jamal here. My character doesn't get chased by animals in the desert by being all glinty and shiny. So I'm playing Kyavo Duskmane, the uh, Leonin Order of the Scribes wizard, with a douchebag spellbook played by the DM. Yep. Um, I don't think the spellbag. I've come to the conclusion. I don't think the spellbook is a douchebag. I think he just oh, no, is great. a douchebag to you. Um, yes. and I don't think they're the same thing. I'm just going to qualify that. Um, anyway, um, last we left off. Oh, last we left off. Um, Sebastian jumped into a tornado. Um, or whirlpool, however you want to put it. Um, reappeared magically in the Urak state. Uh, chilled, had some ribs, and then threw himself back in and got himself captured by some pale. Elves that nobody else knows about. Um, while that was all happening, our group was deciding how much they believed that Sebastian would come back to them. Um, deciding on their considered course of action and such. Um, but one thing that the group were doing and were continuing with was um, helping the Leonins to dig a small passage into the center of uh, a large block of land. Wow, that makes it sound really boring, doesn't it? Um, a two by four mile mountain block of sand that had a whirlpool inside it. Um, the, the attempt to dig a small narrow passageway through um, to see if it would eliminate the whirlpool was in place. And I think that's what the party were doing when we left off. Um, and tis there we're going to pick back up. Um, you guys had an evening of writing spells into your spell books and... Um, sort of going and having a look down at the, um, at the digging process and seeing what was going on. And as we pick up the following morning, I hand over to you guys. What are we doing? So this is where the journey has brought us, isn't it? Digging into a large mountain with hopes of finding something inside. You're looking for dragons. Digging into a large pile of sand, looking for a dragon inside. That sounds even more ridiculous. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here in this cave. You would, you'd think they wouldn't be so hard to find. Yes. I suppose that if we had brought, like, an excavation team, or, you know, the proper tools, magic, power, preparation, anything. Well, if, have we brought anything at all since we came here with nothing? Well... I would like to give you some fantastic news. Please do. I uh, please, Kiavo. I am not at all, but I have indeed now acquired the magic to actually be able to do these things. Unfortunately, Praise it would take me so long to actually make enough progress that we would be here for months trying to find this dragon. Would How is that supposed to make it any better, Kiavo? Because now I have the magic to do it. Congratulations, right. me! Yay! Wow! Mm. I ho I was hoping you would be at least a little excited for me, Alessio. No, certainly, <laughs> certainly happy for your power surge, buddy. Um, not happy about the timeline, considering I have places to be, and being inside a giant sand cave is not exactly where I plan to spend my early thirties. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say this. I'm sorry, go ahead, Rico. Sorry, no, go ahead, go ahead, Joe. No, go, Rico. Go. I was just, just going to say, no offense, Alessio, but uh, the dead uh, the dead can wait. Uh, Joe, and the sleeping can't? <laughs> Who's sleeping? What? 
we were told there was dragons sleeping. Oh, right, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I got really confused. I thought you were talking about one of <laughs> you guys. Not me knowing your own lore. Yeah. I, feel so, I feel privileged. The James verse is mm. flowing through me right now. Uh, uh, uh. Um, uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna say this in character, but James, you'll you'll correct me if uh, that's okay. we'll chalk it up to Hennick's stupidity if I'm misremembering from last week. But um, well, you know, as someone who has uh, spent uh, quite a lot of time clearing rocks out from my field, uh, going through here, it seems that things are only being found when they're sort of beneath the level of of the of the sand mount itself, under the ground, and so. I don't have the slightest damn idea, quite frankly, whether digging straight into this thing is ever going to make an effect on the whirlpool or whatever inside it, but if we're actually looking for dragons, um, that may not be the direction we need to dig after all. Uh, uh, hell, uh, I don't know if we, if, we, if, we, if we disrupt this, whether all this sand just come right down on top and make digging down even harder. Mm. So, Kiava, I don't know what your magics there necessarily do, but... Maybe maybe we can try just just going down. I know it's not the interest of the folk here, but uh... going down, you say? It seems that's where various remains have been found, and we certainly haven't run into any dragons going straight across. So, if you remember, um, just to remind you all, um, the 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 ground that you're standing on, looking at the mountain side, is a couple of hundred feet above where it used to be, right? So you've got a so that's where that level of sand, that two hundred feet, is where things have been found. You may well find dragons even further down, uh, right? Um, but just a reminder that it is quite a large depth you'll be looking at. Um, although two hundred feet of sand is not that difficult to remove by magic. So just to clarify, um, if we went with Henix plan, we'd have to go down two hundred feet, at least. At least. So there, there is uncertainty that we will find anything at 200 feet. It's just like... There's never any certainty maybe. you'll find anything. Yeah. You're okay. making it educated. <laughs> certainty, yeah. do you? <laughs> but uh, certainly, you, you would know that... I mean, kiavo has been here before, and the more importantly, the other Leonins have done their research, right, and their experiments. They know that there is 200 feet of fresh sand on top of where the land used to be. But 200 feet would barely bury a dragon, is the point, right? Um, so they must be a little lower down. Let alone multiple dragons. How's your digging well, down skills, Kiabo? Well, for the hell of it, I could try digging something out, but if we wanted to reach 200 feet, uh, we would need to be here all day. You would? Well, oh. regrettably so. I mean, it's not regrettably, is it, Kiavo? We've already spent the time getting here. It would be a lot less counter, a lot more counterproductive, if we just turned around now and didn't do anything. Especially for Torin. I mean, don't get me wrong. I hate it here, but I just don't want to walk away with our hands empty, right? That's true. That's true. Um... At the same time, we do have people waiting for us. We cannot. We can't just let the crew of the sunset. Uh... Oh fuck! That's true. Oh, though they are willing to wait, you you didn't want to make them wait forever, which is fair. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let, let's do it then. I mean, we're here. It would be better than walking away with. Yeah, that's my opinion. I mean, uh, I can true. with this uh, amulet from the manufacturer. I can do a few feet at a time, but it's a, you know once we get down inside a hole, it's not really clear how how much that helps. Uh, but maybe if you open things up more, Kiabo. But yeah, I, I think I tend to agree. It would be kind of. I don't like to shovel more, uh, well, uh, shovel more sand onto a lost cause, I suppose, but uh, it would be kind of a shame for Sebastian to have got into what trouble he's got into uh, uh, and get nothing from having come here. Are you Feel speaking of Mild Earth? Yeah. I mean, so um, it can do like a five foot cube of stuff. This is loose enough sand, I would imagine, yeah, but it's only but it's... can move it five feet, so like. Once yeah. I'm 10 feet down in the hole, it doesn't really do anything unless the hole is wider and I can sort of... No, but I mean, between you doing that and obviously uh, two or two strong backs, um, and I believe Kiavo has some magic that might be useful as well, even if it's just magic to sort of move stuff around. Um, yeah, I mean, you should be looking at about 60 feet in an hour, at least. Um, I mean, if you're going in a line, right, left to right... Uh, Mold Earth alone does 50 feet in an hour. Um, 
Yeah. But we'd I be mean, looking we at going down, right? Yeah, obviously you would have to. You, that's the point, is right? Is it, you're gonna? It's gonna take you a little longer because you're gonna have to make a circle and excavate sort of maybe. outwards. Right? Let's do it the Minecraft way. Let's basically like carve stairs down. Yeah, like at an angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sloping it down. <laughs> this, Minecraft this one, clutch. This one has never played Minecraft. <laughs> it's like okay, when you, basically when you go down, you can like carve little stairs out of the blocks. Okay, that's a lovely thought, but it's sand. If you do that, you yeah, will just have a lot of sand yeah. on your head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, but you do. The logic is still there, right? You can still mm -hmm. dig down at an angle, right, and keep excavating sideways. And would me and I don't know what Torin would like to do, but I personally would like to assist because I'm quite yeah, yeah. of course. I don't know. There are, there are yeah, some yeah. really, really good digging tools here, and they will not begrudge yeah. you whatever it is you wish to do. Although I mean, they'd I ask you not to dig under their area, right? That's all. I could cast, I could cast haste on myself and work like, you know, like a boss. <laughs> oh, Kiavo, can you maybe yes. cast haste on me as well? Uh, I could cast haste on you unless you wanted me to remove twenty feet of sand at a time. Oh, are they mutual? Are they like exclusive? Can you not cast them both? Um, I think, I well, haste will use haste will use one of my spell slots, and I can. Then worry not. There are I shall plenty use my of earth. Uh, I what, shall use my own strength. What are you trying to cast to move twenty feet of sand? Uh, erupting earth basically is a twenty foot cube, so I'm just gonna. Send a twenty foot, a twenty foot cube of uh, sand flying absolutely bloody everywhere each time. Uh... That sounds incredibly disruptive. <laughs> Why not? Henik, <laughs> predict, <laughs> Henik <laughs> foreshadowed this. Henik literally foreshadowed that we're gonna crash this all on us. Yeah, it's a way to start the dig, at least you know. Mhm. Mm because transmute rock didn't consider, didn't seem better. Uh... I suppose making it mud isn't really gonna help, is it? Um, no, no, we're making drown, sand. Well, drown it's, the dragons it's sand, isn't it? So, what are we going to do? Turn sand into rock? Into rock, yeah, no. Making the ground harder is also not going to help. If You're right. If yeah, no, sand into rock, wouldn't that make it more stable to take down? Because then it wouldn't collapse on us. Mm. Sure, but it's, he can only do it once a day. And it's 40 oh. feet. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, no. But maybe let's use it as like a, a failsafe if anything goes wrong. Oh, that idea. Yeah. Well, I'm just I'm thinking about what Hennick said, and like Hennick's thoughts circled through my mind very deeply. So when he said we're gonna crash all of this down on us, all unless you're thinking is if we make a mistake. There was a scroll for desert burial that you guys missed recently. <clears throat> <laughs> um, yeah. So is it fair to say you guys are digging? Right. So that's what you're doing. Digging. Yes. Okay. Digging um, hole. Mm-hmm. After I've used my spell slots, I'd like to take the time to rest for eight hours so I can get my spell slots back and then continue. Sure, um, everybody else is digging, Carver's sleeping. Um, I think I'm, I, as well. I'm not going to lie, days. Jamal, I think you'd be far more efficient to just pick up a shovel when you're finished with your spell slots. Uh, okay, well, I also want you to, um, uh, upon discussion, um, upon the mention of the um, of the ship, uh, take the time later to... Um, at least rest to be able to change my spells so I can at least cast sending to contact the boat. Uh, first of all, I think you have a rock that casts sending. Um, okay. Yes, it casts okay. sending once a day. Uh, maybe twice a day, actually. Oh. Twice a day, I think. Was right, Joe? Oh, you made two I of them, I didn't you? Look. Yeah, you made two of them and gave one to the to go I thought the we chef. only had... I thought it was only once a day. Uh, I think it was twice. Wait, didn't we give the stones of sending to the guy to you give to his wife? You made two? One you... No. No. no one you no, gave to him to either. contact his wife, and one you kept. But anyway, uh, not only that, um, uh... various members of the ship um, uh, sort of have been sent to visit... Um, from... Uh, to visit... Uh, no, wrong place. Not Ilvacornis, it's called... Ilvacornis, thank you, yes, that's right. Um, yes, yeah, so that's where they were docked in. Um, once they dock up there, um, you can send word up the up the coast, right? Um, ah, yes. So, Plus, yeah. you know, through, I can do sending if we need it, and I'm not using oh, too. slots on moving sand, so... <laughs> you make him... <laughs> you reduce him to such idiocy. I'm not using all my spells on some moving <laughs> sand. <laughs> yeah, that seems very important. So it I is very important right now, but, but it was just hilarious the way you said it. Like, he's just a glorified digger. Uh, yeah. Um, 
after a couple of hours of digging, um, you begin to cut in sort of at a slanted, slant like this. Um, a gentleman comes over to you, a, a Leonin, and uh, says, uh, "Excuse me, I, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt your work, but someone said that you've seen the top of the mountain of sand. Is that correct?" It's true. Yeah, it's very true. Uh, there is a gentleman who would like to ask you about what you saw. He's come from Veralia. From Veralia? Yes. Interesting. That could uh, maybe save us a trip. Uh, probably not, but it could get <laughs> some way towards what we're after. It's not going to save you a trip. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know. Um, Can you quickly show us the map? Mm-hmm. Shit, one second. Oh, bye. Well, we'll speak, speak to him, certainly. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Like to speak to him as well. You better speak to him. Uh, Josh, would you like to introduce your new character? Oh, I mean, I, wanna, I, wanted to, I wanted to pull an <laughs> intro, but fine, I guess. Um, yeah, as, he, uh, as this gentleman approaches you, please tell us what does he look like? How does he act? Oh, Such a... I had this thing in my head. Never mind. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. Yeah, I wanted to call it entrance, but that's fine. You, know, you thought I would just telepathically know that? <laughs> well, I thought it would be cooler than, here's this guy. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, hi. <laughs> uh, my character is a wood elf. Um, he has some kind of dirty, um, slightly off brown leathers on and has a cloak that seems to be made fully out of green leaves. Um, and he carries in his left uh, hand a very long wooden staff that at the top of branches out um, into lots of little branches with little leaves on. Um, and he has a very uh, kind, like warm smile as you as you guys turn to see him. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I understand you're from uh, Viralia. We're all we're sort of on our way there as well. This is a bit of a side uh, side track for us. But uh, what can we do for you, sir? Hi, I was sent by Gilos, a fellow boundary warden, on word of the Queen. As far as I know, the troubles in Viralia are occurring in the East. I know very little about the troubles in the East, though it's been said that the elves are cut off from the ocean. I Why left are you reading the that boundary, out? Down the river and across the sea to this place and made my way south from there by land. Oh, 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 oh. Do you have well, it is good to find out that we will still have reason to go visit the place we were going because you do not know the things that we need to know from that place. But what are you here for, sir? Thank you. <laughs> I will also talk in a morning tone tone. My name is Alessio McPherson. That's all. Um, yeah, that is all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but obviously, I mean, the, the logic being right is that uh, what, what you were going to say, Josh, isn't it, is that you'd come from the boundary to the west and you were seeking information, weren't you? Isn't that what I said? No, you read out the information that I told you you did or didn't have in case they asked you any questions about Horalia, which has absolutely nothing to do with why you're here. You <laughs> he said I said I was sent by the Queen. Yeah, that's it. That's all it says. The Queen, you said. <laughs> yeah, sure. The first sentence, you were sent by Gyorlis, a fellow boundary warden on word of the Queen. That's it. Yes. Who's, who's this birch? Those things. Which yes. Queen? Uh, my name's Birch. If you if you wondered, you seem like you're a far cry from the trees. Why over here? Why over here? Yeah. Uh, Why the desert? There's no trees here. And there's no water in hole here, Lion. Why are you here? Because the Why is your character here? Because... Because there's a mountain of fucking sand next to you and you want yes. to know what's going on, yes? Come on. Yes, that's right. <coughs> mountain of sand. He's always wanted to jump into a whirlpool on the top of a mountain of sand. 
we didn't really go through this much. Uh, we did actually. We were sitting in a restaurant, but uh, we were. Um, okay, so I'll just I'll just fill the gaps because obviously something's been missed here. Um, Birch has been sent by Giolas, who is a boundary warden. The boundary wardens keep the boundary of Viralia separate from the rest of uh, the world, really. Um, and uh, he's been sent to investigate the Earth attacking in Alien. Hmm. Basically to get a report of what's happened there with their Earth attacking um, to see whether it's the same as what's happening in Viralia. Obviously, he doesn't know necessarily what's happening in Viralia. He is only to report back to Giolas. That's his only mission. Um, so the people who know the most about this mountain of sand are you guys. Uh, so suffice to say, instead of this really awkward monotone conversation, what happens is he turns up and you guys tell him everything that you've discovered. And he will swiftly realize that when you guys travel to Viralia, maybe you sh he should go with you. Um, mm -hmm. as that would be a concerted effort of, uh, to, of uh, reporting back to the boundary warden. Um, one thing he will also tell you, which is quite important in that paragraph he read in the monotone, um, is that as far as he knows, the elves are cut off from the ocean. He left down, he came down the river on a boat. Um, but uh, the word is in Viralia that they are cut off from the ocean. Does he know what is preventing them? No. That is all he knows, is that apparently um, he, it, it's been said that the elves are cut off from the ocean. He doesn't even know the details of it. And I guess my question about that would be if they are, uh, if it, if they are cut off from any of their own people, who, or if everybody is sort of sort of on this side of the cut off from the ocean, like, like if they have like any places along the coast that they can't get to where the, some of their people are. I see what you mean. Um, yeah, that's a good question. That again, uh, he won't be able to answer necessarily. Sure, sure, yeah. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. I must say, it is incredibly encouraging to know that there is someone far more confused than I am joining us. <laughs> uh, it's fair to say that uh, whilst Josh might be confused, uh, Birch is not. Um, I take back what I said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Everyone Birch, is it. So what should have been presented was a... Uh, Josh, tell us a bit about your character. Who are they? What, what, is, what makes them correct for this role? What is their history? What makes them tick? Uh, so... <laughs> um, so he uh, is a Sir Close Shepherd Druid. Uh, he very much loves animals, uh, although the things he summons are like spirits of animals, uh, not necessarily actual animals, um, apart from one thing, but we'll get that in time. Um, he um, is not massively naturey, which is why he has his staff, so that that does naturey things, and he uh, doesn't really. Not animal is what you mean. When you say nature, animals are very nature, right? But you mean plants. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. And I chose Druid because we didn't have a Druid. Good reason. <laughs> well, we did, but she died. Pretty much. And I chose the name because I was I remembered that all the Pokemon professors are named after trees, and so I just picked one at random. Uh... Professor Birch has turned up. Um, professor Birch. <laughs> should we call you Professor? No. I mean, <clears throat> should we call you Professor? No. No, I'm not a professor. <laughs> what are you then? I'm a, I'm a simple guy, you know. I like... Oh, Birch, I believe that perhaps the most important question at the moment is, uh, can, you displace, you can you displace large portions of sand and or earth? <laughs> Very, very quickly. Um, Surprisingly, yes. No. Oh. Uh, oh, sure. How could I? Um, can't you summon things that can displace large portions of Earth very quickly? Power of friendship? Or animal friendship? Like a giant Mobile. brewing animal of sorts? Or like, like 12 of them? Raccoon? <laughs> Do you have a raccoon, perhaps, Birch? A raccoon? Uh, the raccoons burrow? They do burrow. They always hide underneath the houses, remember? Yeah, I assume, like, I assume they'll be they burrow the through garbage cans. But that's, <laughs> that's my what image burrows? of raccoons. What, what sort of animal burrows? Garbage burrow snake? speed. Can you summon a snake? Snakes burrow. Uh, like, a, like a mole or like a... A rat? I mean, be a giant badger, I think. Is, uh, badger, oh, yeah. Is, is the an octopus, think. because it has multiple arms. Could work faster. 
Perhaps you can create okay, yeah. a bubble for the octopus. I will. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll. Uh, I'll just. <laughs> You're right. the octopus, Birch. <laughs> Give us an octopus. No, I'm not giving you an octopus. Why? I should have found eight shovels. No, I I will just place my hand to the ground and I will summon eight giant badgers as they burst from the sand. Eight? Yes, eight. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll start digging, I guess. Indiscriminately. Just everywhere. <laughs> Um, the weaving of badges begins, um, leaving you guys a few minutes to take some time off and have a chat. Um, obviously, I'm sure you will recount everything you've learned about this earth attacking, um, and vice versa. Um, mm -hmm. but after that, um, I, I know it's a little, we always said it was going to be strange having to add a new character in. Obviously, Alessio's meeting was just as awkward. Um, but, uh, yeah, somehow we needed to shoehorn something in. However, we are going to do something extremely strange at this point, uh, which is flick to Sebastian, who does still exist, although he is uh, untouchable Sebastian. for the foreseeable future. Um, Sebastian, as uh, you are sat in conversation with Rio, this is day two. Um, it's, you've been with them for, well, it, it's not really day two, it's, it's hour 12, I guess, is a better way of putting it. Um, she's been talking to you about your past, your magic spells she's also told you a little bit about her um she's a library warden um she's a keeper of the books um one thing that's very different about these books is um they some of them talk um some of them have memories in uh so you can read through memories as opposed to just writings um almost like images that you can delve in and out of so her role is quite important um, but about a couple of hours into your chat, um, sand begins to fall through the ceiling. Trickling down into the room. I, I, I won't break eye contact with her. I was just like, is this meant to happen? No, we're having an interesting problem. It seems we're going to be relocating. I take those cuffs off. Are you going to misbehave? Would I? And then I like bat my eyelashes. I don't know. Cats have eyelashes, right? Yeah, I'll bat my eyelashes. They don't normally operate them with their hands, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if I bat my eyelashes, no one will notice. So I'm using my hands. Um, she looks at you, and well, I wouldn't be surprised, but just you will need to partake in a teleportation circle if we're to take you with us. Can I help set it up? No, I don't think that'd be wise. Yawn. Um, however, you will notice that very swiftly, um, something strange is happening to the bookshelves, first of all, actually, we should mention. Um, as she sort of folds one side down, like through the books, and then again through the books, and then again folds it up, until the bookshelf has sort of folded in and the books are no longer visible. And she stacks them all on top of each other and then slides them into a large bag. Um, and once she's done that, um, the group of these pale elves make a circle. And uh, the gentleman looks to her, and who the gentleman who you first met, who captured you, um, who wouldn't give you his name, um, looks to her and, are you sure this is wise? We shouldn't just dispose of him. She says, it's my responsibility. He can hear you now. Also, who's he, the cat's mother? No, just the cat. Um, and with that, he will take your paw quite firmly, um, at which point uh, she will release the cuffs. They don't come off, they just hang loose. Um, you do find you, you, the flow of magic comes back into you. Um, and she will take your hand and they begin to chant. Um, and Sebastian, you will feel that you're being teleported somewhere. As you're sort of, it's almost like you're, you, you feel yourself shrinking, though your body doesn't get any small. Um, and provided you don't create havoc and you go along with it, um, 
you will find yourselves in what looks like a network of caves. Um, but these caves have painted murals on the walls, um, torches in sconces, um, and uh, you can see the roots of some trees above you. Um, and with that, we will flick back to the group. The badgers suddenly fall seven or eight feet flat to the ground um, as they have dug down to some chambers. Within these chambers, you see the remnants of tables, chairs, all sorts. It's like you've broken into a network of caverns. Do they look hurt? No. Oh, thank goodness. Um, I'll just shout down. Are you okay, my lovelies? They continue digging. I don't know what a badger is going to respond. Can conjure animal badgers even speak? I don't think so. I mean, um, I, uh, uh, I'm sure I have something that means that creatures. I'm oh, I'm sure you can talk to normal animals, but these are conjured spirits, right? No, they're animals. Actual animals. You literally said about three minutes and 40 seconds ago, I summoned I said, spirits of animals, something. not animals. I, I said apart oh, from I thought something. you said apart from one thing. Oh. Um, but yeah, but bees can understand my speech. Yeah, no, I know um, that. Um, I just yeah. didn't realize they were real beasts. Um, yes, they'll call back, we're great. Or something. I don't really know what they would call back, to be honest. Um, they can't speak back to me. <laughs> they nod vigorously. It says, I know how to decipher their noises and emotions so that hmm. they can like, tell me things, but I don't think they <laughs> speak back. Great, they tell you yes in badger form. Causing a nightmare I'll here, Joshua. I'll, I'll ask them to come back up to me. Come okay. to- come- The fuck was that? Was that my mother? Maybe. It is my mother, I can hear it. Oh, okay. No, the cave is haunted by a spirit. We'll be back momentarily. No worries. Yeah. And I. I'm uh, so happy. Gonna... Hello, welcome back, guys. Bar. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I clicked the go live button, and then you guys uh started playing like <laughs> snow globes. So what I'm better. I'll keep that for good. Uh, Bruno has the snow globe. He really likes it. Um, nevertheless, uh, we were discussing how um uh, the digging process suddenly gave way to caverns underneath the sand. Um, and in these caverns, you can see tables, chairs, um, artwork on the walls. Um, they look thoroughly lived in. Um, and these caverns extend far, far to the east, west, north and south, as far as you can see, underneath the earth through various doors. It's probably a good idea to get the badgers to stop digging. How far up? Did, how, how long did we travel? Like how far how down have you got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, just over 250 feet. So it is around the area we're told. Well, it's even slightly further down than that. It's further down, actually. Um, it's more Yeah, this is this is 50 or 60 feet below what where the original ground was, right? Um, and these do not look new at all. Um, also of note, uh, they um, the walls seem to be solidified into almost stone-like, sandstone -y sort of substance. What? No. Sort of what sort of weapons or shields or armors, you know, any battle None. mechanisms? Nope. None. None at all. Uh, nope. Uh, you see artwork, you see uh, tables, chairs, a few sort of stores of drinks, food, etc. Can um, I maybe give you some sort of check to see if the walls are armed with traps? Like, are there any defense mechanisms here? Okay. Um, as you get into the cavern, it's half full of sand right now. Um, and you can sort of see lying about. Really? Um, we're not leaving for that. <laughs> you can um, see sort of tables sort of half skewed upwards, chairs. You've sort of broken into a living area. Um, I mean, you can see quite clearly, right, that at the moment in this particular room you're in, um, it, it's not anything sort of, it's not a defense place. It's a, it's a living room. 
can we can we tell perhaps if it's been used recently? Yeah, like, I mean, there are, like, are the stores the stores are like 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 relatively yeah, new or they've uh, been sitting here fresh, for years? Uh, things are fresh. Obviously, the things that you see in them. Um, yeah, I mean, things are. It looks like these were put down sort of yesterday. Um, like the food. Or just a painting? Well, um, you, you've got stores, right? So these are closed barrels. But if you open one of the barrels that isn't covered in sand, um, you will find grain that is seems grain. absolutely fine, edible. Uh, you don't find another couple of barrels full of water. The water is not stagnant. There, it seems very drinkable. Are there any veggies or fruits that grow like um, uh, with sunlight? Not currently in this particular grow. two barrels. And, you know, you so just bear in mind, right? You broke into like one room. Yeah, so there's a table, uh, there's some chairs, there's a couple of pieces of artwork on the wall, and there's a few barrels of stores, um, which contain grain and water. Can but I there are ask? passages going off in every direction. Right? Sorry, Joe, go on. Oh, uh, no, I was... Uh, it doesn't... It's clearly not... Well, we don't know anything about whether dragons can be people-like, do we? I, I literally don't know that much. I know some uh, people will do that in a campaign, but like, I don't know if that's an actual dragon power or not, so... It doesn't seem like a dragon. I don't think that. Right? I don't think that we would know. Uh, well, as far as uh, you would be aware, um, certainly Torin would have a good knowledge of dragons. You've never heard of them becoming people. Okay. So, and it's it's not dragon, not actual dragon sized. No, 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 very human sized. Right, right. So it's definitely something that was below wherever the dragons were. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Cavo. Well, then I would merely yes. stop everybody before we go exploring mm -hmm. and try to make them take a moment and. Get their temp HP for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, it's fair to say you probably ins inspired them during the dig. Um, so go ahead and get your 10, 10, 11. 13. 13. 13. 13 temp oh. HP each. Oh, you've leveled up. Yes, of course. Um, um, I did want to speak to mm -hmm. Hennig. Uh huh. Um, and even more now that you mentioned all this stuff about like the maybe being dragons. Um, so Alessio for a while spent a lot of his time with um dragon kind which is why he can speak draconic does mm. any any of the stuff here ring familiar to me any of the customs the way things are stored painted um no i mean first of all i, I would say the dragon kind if you're going to spend time with dragon kind these days that is dragon borns um yeah, well, yeah. not yeah not dragons um but it's also very obvious to you guys that nothing here is in any way to do with dragons in fact the painting on the wall is of a forest um with uh, sort of moonlit trees, uh, and there is another one um, of uh, a bird cresting over a mountain. Um, those are the okay. two paintings you see. They do look very old in style, um, but apart from that, they're, <clears throat> you know, it's 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 a run room. You can't garner much from it. You're going to have to explore um, with it if you want to. Sorry, go on, Rachel. So Torn would have immediately asked Cavo if this sort of thing was commonplace in Halion to have sort of like cave systems definitely not no. very much not this is completely new and not only that but it's it would be near impossible for the uh for the leonins um because creating solid ground under sand is not something they're capable of right um the walls look like they've yeah. been solidified to sandstone but that would take magic or some other power that you guys don't necessarily have encountered um and not to mention through the pirates uh, not to mention the doorway is too short for Kiava to walk through comfortably does um does anybody recognize the scenes depicted in the um paintings like the forest scenes like anybody standing amongst um or five of us uh, well i mean you don't I... recognize it to be a bird you've seen you know it's it's a bird and you'd all recognize mm -hmm. it to be a forest um the style of art might remind Birch of some of the artwork he's seen in his homeland as a child. Um, but it's very old-fashioned. Mm. It's sort of like I when we, we nowadays... Sorry, Jamal, two seconds. It's sort of like now nowadays when we see a Monet, right? It's not a, yeah. it's not a style that's currently painted in, so... It's an yeah. older style. Well, no, Sorry, Kevin. I, I meant more. I meant more like the forest scene. Yeah, no, I, it's just it just looks like it, sort of. I, I just to give you an idea. It's like forest. aged trees, right? It, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's like nobody's looked at that. Gone shit. I know exactly where that is. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the same with sort of the bird coming sparkly. over the edge of the mountain. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And the bird coming over the edge of the mountain top. It's it's not like a specific mountain top, etc. 
it's a painting. It's an artistic interpretation. Chiavo, you were saying? Yeah. I will come to and you. I, not just this one painting, but just the area, like the room and connected rooms in general. Can I look around and see if there's anything that sort of seems familiar, like it's something I've seen in books about different cultures and okay. history and stuff? Right such. now, you guys can see a table, two chairs, Oh, yeah, Three yeah, barrels yeah. of two paintings and some doorways, right? <laughs> there, there are loads yeah. of connected rooms, but as yet, you guys haven't gone into the cavern system, right? The badgers found okay. this room. You're looking down at it, right? Um, uh, sorry, Josh. Was... Sorry. Well, even if you are in it, right? It's just the one room. Right. I'm going to come to Josh because he keeps going to talk and I keep interrupting him. Josh, you were saying? Or can you remember now? Um, if there, if there's a way to, I'd like to like slide down into the cavern. Like, yeah, you can all walk down in yeah. effectively. It's a little sort of climby, but and then I'm gonna um, open the barrel that's got water in it, and I'm just gonna like cut my hands to gather some water, and I'm gonna like, you know, how people go like to like get a, yeah. a horse, to, like continue. it's gonna do that, and like the bedrooms will like all gather around in like a semicircle, and he'll just start like giving them each like bits of water, okay. and then like break. I don't know if I, I just don't eat wheat, right? No. Would they eat wheat? Wheat. Yeah, that's what they eat. Meat. Well, right? Yes, grain. Uh. Um, they certainly wouldn't eat it in grain form um, like this, no. Sure. They eat vegetation them. and meat. Sure. They eat, like, bugs and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, cool. While Birch is watering the badgers, uh, you all get down into this cave system. And at this point, now that you're down in the room, uh, mm. temp HP attached, inspiring leader on, um, all of that stuff going on. Um, it is temp HP, right? Inspiring leader. It's not increased max. Correct. <laughs> cool. Um, What's now the that you're values for temp and max. 13, thirteen increase. Uh, thirteen temp, no increased max. Just thirteen temp. Um, now that you're sort of down here, um, both uh, Torin and Kiavo, um, these caverns are not designed for creatures your size. Um, the doorways, you know, you're going to have to really squat to get through. They're about seven foot in height. Um, they're even a little short for humans. Um, not uncomfortably short, but Alessio, you, you'd be used to it being slightly taller than this. Um, obviously, Hennick, you will have no problem with height whatsoever, but, you know, this is, I mean, it's still tall for a halfling dwelling, but it's a little more comfortable for you than it is for anybody else. Uh, Birch is also very comfortable down here. Um... It's as if it's designed for people of a slightly smaller stature than humans. Um, and this is notable in lots of other senses. The tables, um, you know, a sort of mid-thigh height for Torin and... Um, uh, Torin and Chiavo. Chiavo. Um, you know, and uh, Hennick, as you will pass them, you can see quite clearly onto them, you know. Um, so mm -hmm. it's, yeah, uh, everything is designed at a slightly shorter height. Um, there's two other puzzles that I think your characters would consider. Uh, the first one is you notice no sign of any torches um, or candles or any other form of natural lighting that would occur down here, which, considering they're underground, is a little bizarre. Chocolate lights. Sorry, what did you say? Traffic lights? <laughs> Chocolate lights. Chocolate lights, right, okay. Sorry, I was like, what? <laughs> um, yeah, so either they're dark-dwelling creatures or their light forms were not, are not currently visible in this room. Mm -hmm. um, and the second thing you will notice is that there is sort of no sign of any body, right? As you sort of look around in the caverns and stuff, just to, as you first begin to explore these rooms, uh, you hear nobody, um, you see no sort of signs of people m moving about or anything, but occasionally you do see, just as you step into the first couple of rooms, um, they look like more dining areas, living areas. Um, you do see like an abandoned jacket. Uh, a pair of boots in the corner. And again, these are smaller than humanoids, um, but they look like they were just sort of set down there. Well, I don't know. Uh, some of my people back in Corman will live in burrows and such, but uh, I suppose if someone ever crashed into their sitting room, they'd, uh, well, they might not actually freak out. They might come and offer you something to drink or eat, but, uh, but they'd sure as hell show up. Um, so I don't know what's going on about here. Strange times indeed, Enik. Uh, I don't like uh, breaking into anyone's house, but uh, it would maybe be a better way to move in some more directions down here if we want to have a look around. Is there any particular direction you would try and head in? 
So currently you are <clears throat> maybe sort of on I'm... the edge of the big mountain of sand. You'd be just below the edge of it in this room you've just gone into. Um, there are rooms going further away from the mountain of sand and rooms going further under the mountain of sand. I guess further under if we're going to be investigating. Who's got dark vision? All of you Bartolesio, is that correct? Or does Henek not have it either? I don't have either? dark vision, but I have I don't... some light amulets. Okay. I don't have dark vision, but I have the uh, I have the sheath, which lets me cast light. Yeah, so I think you've got three or four. So basically, you guys are just going to cast light sources, right? Yeah, yeah, light sources only. Okay, interesting, interesting. Um, and is anybody doing any sort of magical exploration as such? Um, any, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if you have access to like arcane eye or clairvoyance or. Even just simple things like detect magic, etc. Do you want to make any preparations before going further into these caverns? Ooh, well, I definitely use a uh, divine sense. <laughs> I just suddenly re I took realized what you're going to say because I was like, of all the people to reply to that question, Torin was not who I had in mind. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, the problem with divine sense is that it's shit, right? So I'm going to give you a reconvened version. Um, I think I have mentioned this before. I don't. I let it go in the full distance, regardless of walls, right? Okay. Um, and even through the walls, you sense nothing. Okay. Nothing at all. Uh, okay. Then I would like to take the time to um. It will take me ten minutes to uh get this going, but I will take the time to start up a uh, detection. Everybody leaves you behind. Top magic, I can. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cool. You only. Well, we're still brittle casting that. We're like you're holding on to our first level spell slots on level nine. Okay. Cool. Um. You do ritual I can't, I can't cast detect magic. Like normally, as... can I? I can only cast oh, a ritual. I haven't got it prepped. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, oh no, you can't. Prep, yeah, you're right. Cast you're right. Ritual. Yeah, you're right. We're in Pulvania. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Apologies for that. <laughs> right, so as you ritual cast, which you can ritual cast in a minute, right? With your silly spellbook thing. Yeah, I um, it'll take But anyway, um, yeah, you cast attack magic. Um, blah, 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 blah. Fuck. It's not Professor Oak. It's not Professor Oak. Butch! Um, <laughs> are you doing any preparation? <laughs> Um, no, I just wanted to say that uh, I'd like to be last in walking order. Okay. Um, okay. If we uh, do have to go in a line. Um, and my, um, oh, if we do or don't, um, my badges will form a line behind me. And just Neat. Follow. Neat. Um, how long do your badges last? Uh, I think up to an hour. Petra, Petra, Petra. Perfect. Um, yeah, no. A line of eight badges behind you. Followed by one single mushroom. No, I'm joking. Um, a line of eight badges behind you. Um, it is actually eight badges in the badger badger mushroom. Um, sort of bring up the rear. Um, Hennick, any preparations that you are casting beforehand or going down? Mm, I don't really have stuff like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I don't know everybody's magic no, that's fine. stuff. But yeah, no, think... I don't expect you to know. I'm just saying I don't. So mm, cool. I think I'm good. Um, yeah, great. As you uh, as you guys head on into these uh, into these caverns, um, lights lit, um, detect magic, uh, sort of goes off, and although it detects no current magic, um, immediately Cabo, you will notice various bits of residual magic, and this primarily occurs in what appears to be a strip of black stone surrounding the entire room. And every room. Um, it's about three inches in height. Um, and it runs... Uh, it's sort of... About three foot up from the ground. Two and a half, three foot up from the ground. So at what you would assume is waist height for whatever creatures inhabited this place. Um, but it's obviously nice. not waist height for Keanu or for... Um, or for Torin. Um, so, if I can kneel down and get a closer look at it, is this the same sort of rock that's um, sort of stuff we saw with the pillars that were created out of the ground from the um, Leonin, or is this something very different in terms of the sort of rock? It's the same, but not the... It's, it's obsidian. Um, you have encountered this yourselves that you gave to the Leonin, right? Um, so you've seen this rock before. It's obsidian. Yeah. Does anybody have the light spell equipped? Uh, I do. There we go. So okay, do I. I just want to read a couple of things. Uh, okay, it doesn't come up on your character sheet for me. Um, ah, I can use the amulet of the sun that I have to um, cast it. 
20 feet light, 20 feet dim. Okay, cool. Um, completely covering the object with something on paper. So you might. Okay, cool. Sorry, just wanted to double check that. Um, fantastic. I think uh, perhaps, Henek, you need to equip the... Well, you could have equipped. Yeah, yeah. Just I just spent a spell. charge, oh. which I forgot I had to do, but... Oh, anyway, um, yeah, I just wanted to check the, the limits of this. Um, yeah, so this um, obsidian strip shows remnants of magic. Um, it, it, it's, that's a way to describe. It's the same sort of uh, light and hue and um, sort of detection that you get from the magical items on the party that are not currently active. Um so it's as if it's magic that could be activated. Does that make sense, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, for example, like a, a wand of magic missiles would give off this magic, right? It it contains magic, yeah. but it isn't currently in use. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, let's make sure we don't activate whatever this thing is, because uh, that could be bad for us. Well, they've got it running around their living room. It's probably not going to blow you up. No, but it might suppress our, it might suppress some things. Sure, maybe. Or control um, some people or something. We never know. We so you're just going to fastidiously avoid touching it. Is that the plan? Yeah. Okay, now. cool. Um, interesting enough, it's not long before you come to a cavern room with where the door is closed. Um, and the door handle is made of the same material. You want to also avoid touching that. Well, mostly because I want to knock on the door. We're in somebody else's house. Okay. You knock on the door. Nobody responds. Of course. After which... Enough of this. I'll grab the, the handle and try to open it. Okay. Um, you feel a sort of pull on you, Torin. Um, I wonder. Uh, give me an insight check with disadvantage. As Turin is the furthest from a vastly intelligent mage that I can consider. Um, but you do have the requisite <laughs> required. That's an 18 with disadvantage. 18, nice. Yeah, at this point you feel like it's asking you, almost, if you are willing to put magic into it. You would have to expend the spell slot to do so. Sure. Okay. As you do so, the room lights up. The whole room lights up. Um, the door unlocks, the room lights up, uh, and it's it's beautifully lit. It's sort of in these pale blue sort of moonlight hues, um, and little other bits of the room sort of come to light as well. There is um, sort of a warmth emanating from this strip all the way around the room. Um, there is, uh, in this particular room you're in, it's like a bedroom. Um, and there is a sort of large bed uh, and uh, a dresser and such. And then in the corner is a stone ewer full of water, which begins to bubble um, as if being heated. Um, and Torin, even if you let go of the door handle, this, this continues in this room. Okay. In fact, if you were to... In fact, the uh, badger man, uh, Birch, you're probably still in the previous room. The previous room is also lit up. Go on, Josh, sorry. Uh, when we get into the, the, this room, the next room that we've just been in, that we've just gone into, um, I'm going to stand in front of the bed. I'm going to uh, ask the badgers to, like, <laughs> like, root under the bed, in the bed, to see if they can find anything. Okay. Um, you're turning your badgers into nifflers. I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, as they sort of snuff around, um, one of them comes out with what looks like the corpse of a mouse, um, or perhaps a small vole. Um, one of them comes out with what appears to be a child's toy. It's, it's a wooden child's toy of some sort. It's like a ball with a string attached to a little cup that you can sort of try and flick the ball up and catch it in the cup. Um, and, uh, one of them comes out chewing a sock or a stocking. Um, but other than that, no. Um, oh, oh, 
I'll let them have what they found. <laughs> oh, uh, the Bandits are very excited about their wooden cup toy that they can't operate. Um, but yeah, um, is anybody investigating any other elements of the room? At this point now, it's all nicely lit up for you. I mean, Torin's just looking for signs of life, basically, mm -hmm. using his, like, tracking skills to see if there's any... Well, you know, the, the ground is solid sandstone, um, but it there are disturbances on it, if you like. Um, Torin's also probably got quite a good sense of smell. Um, yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's, like this was, it's like this was inhabited only a couple of hours ago, maybe three or four hours ago. Six and with like an sure. abundance of people, like I definitely no, uh, no. There's probably a maybe two or three in this particular area. It's currently it but appears I mean, like, like as, they're in someone's home. As we've been walking around, though, like only thus same, far it's, we've it's only same... done living room to dining room to bedroom. That's all we've done. Okay, so, and, it's, it's and, all and, and, all, and all I've smelled is the same couple of people, basically mm -hmm. within. Yeah, okay. um, yeah. It's it's not a. It's not a smell you're particularly familiar with. It's not a humanoid you're particularly familiar with. Um, but mm -hmm. they do, it smells like living creature. You know, like, um, you know, especially in this particular room, there's smells that perhaps at some point they've used a chamber pot, uh, etc. Right? Mm. Well, you're not like sort of moment, like, <laughs> it doesn't stink a shit. But for somebody who's got a very good sense of smell, right? It's it's basically yeah. smells like if you know if you guys went out and. Four hours later, a predator came into your home. This is what they'd smell. Mm -hmm. um, so as I, just a reminder, there's a bed, which obviously has been searched under. There's a wardrobe. Uh, there's a stone ewer in the corner. And other than that, the room's fairly empty. I'll go through the wardrobe. Yeah. Um, you open up the wardrobe, and uh, it looks like... Things have been sort of grabbed out of here and a couple of bits have been left in the corners. Um, so there's a pair of boots uh, that appear a little pointed in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, they are made of soft leather. Um, they're as if they're not really boots you would wear out in the wild. Um, they're very soft, um, like moccasins almost. Um, and then hanging is uh, what looks to be a long grey-brown robe. Made of wool. Um, those are the only two things left in this wardrobe. This torn probably about nothing to do with a shabby old robe. No, well, probably not. Yeah. I'll take it then, I'll take it. and I'll use it to disguise myself. As? A grumpy old robe wearer. <laughs> Uh, and I'll take the moccasins too. Okay. It's a full costume. Okay. <laughs> Does it have a hood? Does it no. have a hood? No. I'll I'll like slow I'll slowly perch it like over my head. It, like it, that. It, okay. That makes you um, look really I'll, silly. I'll make a makeshift wood so okay. I can be disguised. I will be a rogue. Nobody can stop me. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. While well, McPherson's playing fashion games and looking like a fool. Uh, <laughs> can we look for the entrance quote unquote of this house that we're uh, well I mean when you, this house there is a door in front room. of you um, yeah. obviously you've come from previous rooms uh, you could go all the way back to the passage you started and go the other way but at the moment you're headed towards the um, the mountain of snow right uh, of snow mm -hmm. of sand, mm -hmm. right? of sand. Uh, so you can continue to do so for now if you wish um, as you go through this door you find yourself in a small child's room it's clearly uh, a child's room as there is a cot in here um and there are two there are little like books but the the pages are sort of wooden if you like it's 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 a four page wooden book what the like a little like an infant sort of mm. Mm. can i flip through it does yeah, it tell uh, a story you don't understand a word of it like, go on josh what were you gonna say is it still warm underground? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's warm down here. It's very warm down here, in fact. It's almost a little uncomfortably warm for some of you, although um, I think Torin would be the most comfortable. Um, probably Henek quite comfortable as well, but um, certainly Alessio and Birch, uh, you would find it a little uncomfortably warm down. 
as you flip through this book, it's it's got very little writing in it, but what writing there mm -hmm. is is not writing you understand. Um, yeah. But there are some pictures, um, mm -hmm. and there are pictures of uh, two squirrels. Um, and then one is not in the second picture, and one is in the third picture, and then they're back together in the fourth. Uh, there is an acorn theme going on throughout the story. Um, even without the words, you can sort of understand that it depicts a story of two squirrels um, sharing a stash of acorns. Can I check what the language is? I was going to say, Birch, uh, this seems like something that you might enjoy. Uh... Hmm. I'll, I'll hand the book over to him. Uh, yeah, um, none of you recognize the language, although, uh, Birch, Chiavo, potentially Alessio as well, I think. Um, you I recognize think a couple Elvish. of, yeah, you recognize a couple of the figures as Elvish, but the majority of the language is not something you would understand. Are there any words that I can pick out? Uh, not necessarily. You understand, like... It's the equivalent of one person who is Arabian seeing another Arabian language, right? Um, so it's like you recognize the alphabet, but not what it says. This, that, to some extent, to everyone, yeah? Yeah that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So you recognize the turn of hand, but you don't recognize any of the words at all. Uh, then I think I'll take said book and sit down cross-legged and have the badger sit in front of me in a semicircle and I'll <laughs> attempt to tell them a story with said book. Right. Um, one thing you will note is, is, is all of you will have noticed is the book is beautifully carved in the wood, right? Um, carving words and pictures into wood is not an easy task. And it isn't uh, the sort of book you'd expect to be handed to a child, but this is clearly a child's book in a child's room. Um, in your worlds, this would be an incredibly expensive thing. Right? Um, it's a master craftsman's work. Um, there is a second book as well, uh, much the same. Um, uh, but this book quite clearly shows uh, the first flight of a bird, of a baby bird. Um, there is also on the wall um, a sort of square of um, it's almost glass um, but it has a sort of green sheen to it um, but it could function, function as a looking glass if one wasn't too picky Is there an entrance to this house? There is another door leading out of here, and it, if you take that one, it will lead you into a kitchen, uh, which is well lit. Um, in this kitchen area, um, there's sort of a, a large stone tub, which is filling with water um, as you guys walk in. Um, the room is still lit, right? So it's whatever Torin did is filling it with water. While I am fascinated by the intricacies of these people's lives, mm -hmm. I would very much like to get out of this house. That's fine. Where is the front door? Um, I, that's fine. Uh, but I will just tell you the few things that are in here that might give you some clues. Um, so there is a stone uh, sort of basin filling with water. Um, on the side is what looks like a very freshly baked loaf of bread. Um, it's Yeah, I mean, it's a little stale, but only in terms of like, Bread goes stale in a day in this world, right? So it was definitely baked this morning. Um, and uh, on the table is a small handwritten note um, written in the same language as the uh, two wooden books. And then there is uh, another door uh, at the front here. And indeed, if you open that door, the passage beyond this door. Wait, 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 wait. Before we do, Chiavo. Yes. Is there anything in your book that matches this note? In the book that matches the note, um, i like the, the 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 calligraphy, the what's it called, the, the way that letters are written. Okay, um, pass a note to me for a second, mm. if you will. Uh, first off, I'll take a minute to um cast comprehend languages and oh, see imagine. what the note actually says. Who would have done that? Big brain. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 
Uh, right. You can't comprehend languages. You don't understand a word that's written on the note, but you do understand quite clearly both of the books that are the children's books. Um, and you're able to read them. They tell a story of two squirrels, and the other one tells a story of um, of a bird taking flight. Um, so you can now read the language that they're written in. The note is written in the same language, but you don't understand anything you're reading. It's, it's uh, sort of um, it's co it's a coded message then. You would assume so in some way or other. Um, so, for example, um, let's just say you can't comprehend languages on something that was written in English because you didn't speak English, right? And yes. every letter, every A was a B, every B was a C, every C was a D. Um, it, it wouldn't read sense, anything yeah. to you, right? Um, so that's the that's the feeling you get from this note. Um, Um, I'd like to take some of the bread and feed the badgers. Okay. Um, but you are reaching the end of the badgers' term on this plane of existence. No, they're real. Because you've been down here for about 50 minutes. Um, yeah, I know. Cool. They'll scurry off eventually, yeah. which is why I want to feed them. Yep, yeah, but uh, you feed them all the bread. Um, the bread's very well made um, and quite dense and almost a bit sweet to smell. Um Cool. And uh, the passage beyond the door on the wall is um, is dark. I'll tap my chest and activate my little light medallion. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the light interesting light. thing about it being dark is that Torrin didn't light it up with his spell slot is the point, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, when you look in, it seems to be a very plain passageway. Um, there are 12 doors leading off of this passageway. Various different intervals on the right and left. Well, I guess we'll go through every single one of those doors and eat every single one of those porridges and sit on every single one of those chairs. <laughs> yeah, so for the most part, <laughs> you open these doors and you just see people's homes, right? Um, okay. they are, I won't peruse much. I, um, like, if I see it's just a house, I'll close right away. Yeah. Uh, eventually, though, Kiavo, you stumble upon a book. And it's a book you can read with your Comprehend Languages. Um, it is uh, a tale of gods. Um, and it tells of uh, Corellum, the Old Father. A god you would know of um, quite well. Um, the father of the elven gods. And these people are definitely elvish in some way. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, I'll take. I'll um, transcribe a passage. Um, in, in literally, um, symbol for symbol. Uh, into my uh, spellbook briefly. Okay. Just on an empty blank page somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll um, scroll down the note. Uh, the uh, scroll down uh, uh, as best as I can the uh, encoded note. Okay. And um. I believe now is time to uh, at least attempt to consult Theseus and see if Theseus will have any recognition of this, because okay. I... Um, Theseus responds quite quickly, and for once doesn't sound so sarcastic. As he immediately says, where did you find this, this book? Well, this big pile of sand I was speaking of. Well, we managed to dig through some of it and broke through into a um, cavern underneath. Uh, the best I can say is it seems like there were elves of some form living here. I know the previous owner of this book you mentioned was an ancient elf, yes? The Moon Elf. I'm feeling you might understand. This is not the language of the Moon Elves. Not of the Moon Elves? No. But you recognize it? Yes. May I ask of who? After a while, um, Theseus, you can ask, but right now I'm not sure. It is my duty to pass down all information within. This is not information I'm comfortable sharing. The Moon Elves had an ancient enemy. I know little I... of them. They were known as the Wild Elves. Many, many Moon Elves gave their lives 
who I had thought lock away the wild elves forever. Perhaps even wipe them off the planet. It was almost the end of moon elves as they are now. Some gave their lives to books and artifacts to keep these wild elves history. Like your book. That like means. Book. <sighs> Sorry, we can't actually hear this. I'll be quiet. Uh, no, you can't, but still. <laughs> if, we could, if we could, it would be cool. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. At least just needs a broadcast mode. So, these elves are these a long historic enemy. Let's not jump to conclusions, on. but the book that you have found certainly is written in what was once their tongue. The book you hold is of moon elves, but it doesn't tell you that the moon elves still exist, does it? No, it's true. We found... Just out of curiosity, Jamal, do you tell these just anything else about your recent adventures? Um, Is there anything that stands the... out as unusual magic that you might not have comprehended otherwise and might need the help of somebody far smarter than you? Um, well, there's plenty. There's the gigantic fucking vortex. There's the um, strips around the room. There's a whole host of things, but... Anything in particular that you're going to mention to Theseus? Then not in that case, important. why not all of it? Yes. Not, not anything important. Do you want to do that step by step? Do you want to do that step by step? What's the first thing you'd mention after that? Okay, well, the first thing would be it would definitely be talking about the strips, the magical strips around the room. There's something Vizin. within them. I don't want to ask. He'll tell you it's Vizin. And he will tell you that this, in fact, is a moon elf thing. Um, the moon elves uh, stored latent magic in Jidzin. And uh, when it is touched, you can awaken its powers. Um, usually used to light a room, but also can be used to store memories. Um, so in some rooms, the moon elves would store the memories of perhaps, for example, a theatre show. And you could stand there with your hand on the wall and give it a spell slot. And you could watch the entire theatre show back again and again and again over years. It's... Jitin um, is known as Memory Stone. It's uh, it's like Obsidian, but it is wakened to magic. The art is. But it cannot be used for hostile Europe. purposes as such. It isn't something that we should be cautious of. It could be frightening if it woke something particularly frightening, but no. Douche. Hmm. Um, and the other thing as well, the um gigantic swirling mass of fat sand that was found within the um. Within, within this gigantic heap. That's impossible. I wish I could say that it was impossible. The book but... sort of flicks to a page and shows you an image that looks much like the center of the Yurak State Lake. Yes. Is this still present in your world? Yavo know that. That's the question. You sailed past it, yes? Yes. Right, okay, that one specific Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. My yes. globe. Literally <laughs> on the map. Uh, I thought the one we were talking about, the gigantic one, was off the coast of um, Halion. You did That's... see one off the coast of Halion. You do see, did see one in the sand, but the one he shows you looks like the, the one with the Eurex State. Yes, the Eurex State one exists. There are, other, there are others. There shouldn't be others. Where the Yurak State whirlpool is present, that is where the Wild Elves were locked away. It was the last act of the Moon Elves. Whirlpool was where they were? Where they were locked away. It was their prison for, ever for their eternity. Ah. Well, we're seeing whirlpools in other places. We've seen one in the sand. We've seen one in the sea. 
The whirlpools should be a one-way trip. The new place. We gave them no way of getting out. And at this point, you'll notice that Theseus starts to stop talking about the Moon Elves and start talking about we and us. Mm. Ah. Interesting. Just a heads up, by the way. If you had have consulted Theseus the day after you went past the mysterious whirlpool at the center of the Urex state, you could have known a lot about this in advance. <laughs> Too shy. <laughs> Too shy. Uh, but, uh, yeah, um... He gets a little reluctant after that and stops filling you in on the entire lore of the world. Um, but the important thing to note is that the wild elves um, were locked away in the whirlpool at the center of the Urax State Lake. So as to prevent them from causing harm elsewhere. If, is for... Diablo relaying this? I think so, yes. So, Diablo, you're relaying like... this. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely. It wasn't a question. Case. Yeah, well, he doesn't tell anything to the book, but he <laughs> yeah. does tell the book stuff to us. Is it common knowledge that like the wood elves are the wild, the wild elves are bad? None of you have ever heard of a wild elf, right? And Not even birch. What is, what is the general perspective about the snow elves? Snow elves? Nobody knows anything about snow elves. They're in Skyrim, not in this game. Wait, what? Just thinking moon elves. Moon. Moon elves. Moon. Oh my god. <laughs> um, and this is the way in my head I've been saying snow elves the whole so time. So again, uh, with moon elves, uh, the common person wouldn't have a clue what a moon elf is. Um, even those of you who have had interactions with the Mages Guild, uh, even Kiavo prior to receiving this book, would have maybe read mention of moon elves long, long ago. But they disappeared two millennia ago. Um, Basically a long lost legend. Yeah, but... It, all uh, depictions of the Moon Elves that Kiavo has ever come across um, describe them as a goodly people. Um, they're the predecessors to current Elves. Wild Elves have never been mentioned anywhere at all. Well, I'm sure they're described as a good people, but now we also know that they're the ones that made up those descriptions because they won. Maybe, maybe not. But certainly that's the impression you've got, is that they were good people. Well, what I'm wondering here is, Kiavo, how much can you trust this book? Because what if the Moon Elves weren't that good altogether? I mean, if they locked people away, they might be the reason that that whirlpool came into existence in the first place. Unless you say something smart. Dun dun dun! Good for thoughts. Can you imagine if, if we, like, had uh, Theseus talk, um, like, a lot more throughout the campaign, and this whole time has been evil and manipulating us to do stuff. That would have been really cool. It certainly it, wouldn't be. It would be ma massively ineffective while given to Jamal, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly not, because he got a spear. <laughs> yeah, we see him every nine episodes. I've forgotten what his voice is every time you guys speak to him. He no longer has a voice, he just has my voice. Well, <laughs> I have. I have two theories. Either the Moon Elves are evil and they locked away the Wild Elves and now they're, they're trying to escape and all of this is happening. Or the Wild Elves are evil and they're trying to escape and all of this is happening. Either way, we can blame the Moon Elves for what happened because they locked them away inefficiently. You should never lock a prisoner away. You should hang them. Well, there's a fair few other ways it might be there, Alessio. I mean, uh, maybe well, nobody... Yes, if they were that particularly evil... evil or... Or maybe some people have changed. Uh, I, I mean, all I have to go on is what I've seen of these these folk in this place. And I mean, I'm not saying that nobody can do a bad thing if they teach their children about sharing, but uh, it doesn't seem like an evil message in that uh, squirrel book there. Hmm. I don't know. It seems oddly suspicious that all of this can be traced back to the Moon Elves. And it seems all these suspicious that Kiav has been traveling with the Moon Elf all along, and he never told him. Kiav, what fault? It's Still, all it's, a, it's a very big He's secret. He's the freak. It's a He's... very big secret. He's... All I would say is, if you're a good guy, you wouldn't be scared of saying, "Hey, I'm these people," right? You would just say, "Hey, I'm these people, the good guys." You wouldn't hide it. Do you see me thinking, guys? 
while, while this conversation is happening, uh, Birch is just like play wrestling with all eight badges, uh, <laughs> kind of giggling and rolling all over the floor. Useful, practical. Um, I'm over here, like, uh, unless he's gone full into like paranoid mode, he's just like theorizing, he's starting to like draw shit on the ground. Perhaps it's meanwhile, best Kiyama's be... just lost in deep thought over this, just okay. trying to um, reach a conclusion. Perhaps it's best that we uh, take this news to Veralia ourselves. Oops. In the meantime, you're standing in a corridor with 12 rooms. Are you uh, going anywhere, doing anything? What's the plan? Are you heading further into this complex? Yes, we need to figure out who lived here. Okay. Yeah, further, right. further in. Okay. I just want to check. Like, I that's suppose. A... Well, I don't know if, how much I necessarily care who lived here. I, I want to, unless we know for sure they had something to do. And you know, maybe it sounds like they do if the book has this connection to whirlpools and such uh, made with these people. But um, yeah, I just want to get under to where we think the dragons might be. And if not, then maybe we can go yeah. the other direction. And maybe some of these people are still around and we can talk to. Fine, but um, okay. Yeah. I, I, this mystery as it is, uh, to me, is only uh, on the path to, to what we're here for. Yep. You got it on the nose for me. Okay. So as you guys continue down this corridor... Um, um, go on. Before we continue, um, I'm going to say goodbye to my little uh, badgers, because I think it's probably been an hour now. It has. Yes. Um, and Bertrand will just stand there and watch them more, like, walk out in a straight line. One still chewing on a sock. One still dragging the ball and cup, um, and he'll wait until they're actually out of his eye line before then continuing with the group. Um, and uh, yeah, cool. After that, um, you guys sort of all of the 12 doors that led off of this corridor were homes, um, but at the end of this corridor is a um, sort of larger door. Um, comfortable to walk through for the Dragonborns and, and uh, the owners of this world. Um, and you are, you find yourself in a very vast chamber. Um, unlike the other rooms where there was a sort of line of Jidzin on the walls, uh, this has sort of a circular panel, I guess, um, as you first enter. It's on the wall next to the door. Still no signs of life? Like actual people? Well, right now, uh, you can only see sort of 30, 40 feet in front of you. Um, and it appears empty, completely empty. I'll try the good old, hello, hello, hello. That's pretty much a good description of what happens. Um, is anybody hello. touching the panel on the wall? Is anybody willing to potentially donate? Can I reach it? Yep. Yeah. yeah, very much so. It's uh, three and a half of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, he's not sure how anything would work, but he'll try it and see if he can Yeah, do um, unlike Torin, uh, you are a spell caster, right? Torin is sort of much more of a martial character. Um, you uh, can activate this without expending a spell slot. Yeah! <laughs> uh, <laughs> brutalized. Um, yeah, a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the room lights up in various different ways. Um, but what's most interesting is it seems like a spotlight system um, that lines sort of long rectangles throughout the room. However, none of these rectangles seem to have anything in them or be relevant in any way. Right? It's just, it's lighting up rectangles. Um, Yabo, yeah, you've seen this before, but some way very different. Um, you've seen this in the Mages Guild. Um, it is the same sort of lighting that they have in the library. Light up bookshelves. Oh. But there are no bookshelves. No there bookshelves, is how, so what there, the hell is here instead? There is only one thing in this room. It is a very long wooden table at the centre of the room, stretching almost the length of the room, with many, many chairs along it. Um, although you do notice something else, a little further to the sort of northeast, if you like, of the room, the up and right of the room, um, you see runes drawn onto the floor that appear to be glowing. They're in a circle. In particular order? They're in a circle. They're just glowing, like, continuously. Yeah, they're all glowing. They're all glowing, yes. Um, 
can I throw a spoon into the circle, see if anything happens? It bounces on the floor. Right, okay. Gavel. I was about to say Sebastian, but... Alethio's magical it. investigation is over. He threw a spoon yep. at it, nothing yeah, happened. No, no, literally. <laughs> that, that is it, that's what I'm calling Kiavo. Yep. Uh, Kiavo, uh, you recognize this instantly. It's camp. a teleportation circle that is no longer active. Um, they take a while to fade active. away. Um, ah. A competent mage could probably work out where the circle would lead. Um, but sadly, we don't have any of those with us, so... Um, and chance I could actually uh, accomplish that with the assistance no. of Theseus. Um, the guidance. So, uh, <laughs> the problem is with this teleportation circle is it's a closed loop. Um, so normally with a teleportation circle, it goes both ways. And that's how you yeah. would ascertain the location at the other end. Um, but this is a closed loop. If anything, it looks like it teleports here. Um, even when Theseus reads it, it looks like it teleports here. Um, but it also teleports from here. It's as if it's it goes from here to here. One of my theories is that they've been somehow getting in and out of this of these caves into the outside world. The proof is in, on the floor with a spoon. <laughs> Guys. Uh, but Kiava, basically uh, every teleportation circle you've ever seen looks different to this. Um, right. It's, uh, it's also not a permanent structure, which every teleportation circle you've ever seen is. Um, and indeed, it's fading away in front of your eyes. Um, the speed at which it's fading, you can work out it was activated about four hours ago. What's interesting about four hours ago is it's almost exactly when you guys started digging down. Yes! I fucking knew it! Right, I'm really excited exciting. about this. Because I'm very excited because it's, my th it's, it's proven. Guys, I think I know what's going on. Oh? Hennick is uh, obviously wary of the circle, not understanding this mm -hmm. stuff necessarily. So he, he uses his... his telekinetic abilities that he uses to move his rocks so effectively and grabs a spoon and hands it back to Alessio trying to interrupt him. If digging is uh, so powerful, you might need this back, Alessio. Just give him a spoon. Indeed. The power of a spoon. Um, I'll keep oh, it God. and I'll add it to my inventory. As How, do, uh, spoon. How do Toran and Birch respond to this empty library, the long table and the um, and the mysterious fading teleportation circle? Um, I think with Alessio being so excitable, he's just kind of thinking, wow, humans are weird. <laughs> uh, mm. And uh, that's about it, really. <laughs> I, I asked the same question, Joe, in my head. Um, how is it had spoon? You threw it there, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm returning your spoon. <laughs> I would like to say I named it. This is Hennig's spoon, a spoon that Hennig gave to Alessio, validating his intelligence. Parenthesis in his mind. Uh -huh. um, Torrent, how are you responding to this? Strange yeah, language? Torrent's very. I, I, this, this stuff is a little over his head. I think he's deferring to to Chiavo and and perhaps Theseus for for advice as to how to proceed. But you're patiently following, you're not sort of wandering off oh, and yeah. exploring. No, I'm, I'm definitely I'm definitely interested in in, in what's happening. I'm not uh, okay. I'm not moseying about. Um in the library there are also two doors just to let you know, one at either side of the library that are identical and they appear sort of oaken, um made of wood. Um and at the top of the library is a, a door that sort of it swims with magical light. Um it's uh, it's dark in color. It's you can't tell what material it is from here, um, but it's uh, it's shimmering and the light on it is maneuvering around. Sorry, Kiava, you were saying before I interrupted. So the temporary teleportation circles. Mm -hmm. um, Theseus Circle has one. heard of them. I'm guessing. No, never. Never, never a temporary. Okay, well this is um. Teleportation circles are built by a group of people, very slowly. And once they've completed it, it remains in place until it is destroyed, as far as Theseus is concerned. So uh, this is novel magic. Yeah, you've seen teleportation circles in the Mages Guild regularly, right? They teleport you from Mages Guild to Mages Guild. They exist permanently. Yeah. Um, you've probably even maybe assisted in the, or seen the creation of them before. Um, these runes on the floor are not how it's done. Um, but the, the, the magic is that of a te teleportation circle. Intriguing. Mm -hmm. Room Very to the right, intriguing. room to the left, big shimmering door up to the north, nothing else in the room apart from a long wooden table with nothing on it. Then I would like to eagerly head towards the next door and um, 
Yes, that, that the narrows it down. The magic door or the one of the two doors on the right and left of the room? Uh, let's go to the magic door first. Let's not immediately touch it, but let's examine it, see if, I can, okay. see if there's any sort of... You give me an investigation check. So you look at this door. Be a 19. There is a shimmering magical ward in front of it, about three inches in front of the door, that prevents anybody from being able to touch the door. Um, you would know that, A, that would need to be dispelled for the door to be touched, um, although it does seem to echo with some form of um, evocation magic. Um, perhaps there is a way to bypass it as opposed to dispel it, but I think Yava recognizes instantly. Um, and the door itself appears to be uh, very sort of steadfast and it's set well in the rock. Uh, but you were going to say? Um, I'm going to turn to Torin. Um, and I'm, I'm going to say, excuse me, um, I don't actually know your name. You didn't introduce yourself. Um, but have you ever thought, have you ever, what if you're a dragonborn, right? I am, Birch. Thank you. I am Torin and I am a dragonborn. A gold yes, and I am Alessio. He kind of looks at the human and is like, okay. Um, have you ever, like, what if you could be a dragon? You're so close. Uh, I've asked, been asked this question before, you know, by a friend of mine. He reminds me of you. <laughs> How uh, mysterious. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I mean, I imagine it'd be fantastic, but uh, I'm not sure how it pertains to the situation at hand. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, and I could try and do it for you, but I can't. Sorry. And then I'll just walk off and start looking at books on shelves. There's no books on no shelves because there's no shelves in here. There's no books in here. You said Remember? that there was a teleportation circle. Yeah. And... Shelves with books now. <laughs> nope. nope, I said there were rectangular lights that look like they were once used for a library, as you see, as Kiava had seen this lighting in a book in a library before, uh, but there are no bookshelves in the places where the lights are. Yeah. Magically, do you know what? As players, you've seen these books being folded up and put away. Uh, <laughs> I'll just I'll just walk towards a wall and just look at it like, hmm, yes, interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, Kiava, what are you doing with your magic door? Um, so you said evocation magic, right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything like visual on the ward itself, or is it just some ethereal it's thing shimmering. that I just know is there? It's shimmering with slight light. Um, uh, the light is sort of pale yellow color. Pale yellow color. Mm -hmm. Um, what happens if I, uh, I'm gonna take a few steps back so I'm not like right in front of the ward. What happens if I spark at the ward? Um, as in you cast spark? At the yeah, ward? just towards the wall. Um, you'll need to dodge it as it reflects back towards your face. Okay, sure. Um, what, what are we doing? An acrobatics check? <laughs> no, I don't need a check. You sort of, you, you duck, you see it coming at you. Sure. Um, it went, okay. you, know, you You were prepared for that eventuality. Your character is slightly yeah. less stupid than you are. Um, yeah. It's, uh, you duck away and it flies past you. Zings out across the room. Um, Okay. Um, what if I cast light towards it using the amulet that I have? Same thing. Oh, sorry. Just a reflection. A like that. Just a reflection. I've got a big ball of light in my face. Okay. Hmm. looking through what else I have at the minute and um, <laughs> frantically trying to figure out something. I got nothing to help. Uh, while you're doing that, there are two other doors on the other sides of the rooms. Is anybody going through? They're just, like, they're just like regular doors? They're not they're doors. regular doors made of oak. I'll open one of them. Uh, cool. Nothing the other. Um, yeah, the first room appears to be a armory. Um, it is uh, full of um, sort of 
Uh, you've seen these before, like mounts on the walls for various different weapons. Um, okay. You do find 35 longbows. Um, wow. And each one has uh, two... Um, you call the things that hold arrows? Quivers. Oh, quivers. There we go. Uh, two quivers of arrows next to them, 20 in each. Um, they are fairly elven in make, but they're a little archaic. Um, not what you'd expect. And the bows are made of sprung steel, as much as they are of wood. Um, almost, yeah, it's, they're difficult to pull. Um, can I, can I, can I take one to replace my, my simple short bow with? Yeah, very much so. Um, it is a non-magical longbow. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, they're effective. Um, you also find ovens of short swords um, made of a slightly unusual metal. I don't really recognize. Um, that's it. Short swords and bows. Short um, swords and long bows. I'll, uh, I'll fill uh, Alessio in. I'm sure he'll be yep. happy to know that there is an armory in this building. Mm -hmm. It's good to know that they're not weak. They will mm. present a good fight. Um, in the other room, uh, Hennick, did you enter? Ooh, that's a question. Does Hennick go to any temples very often? Mm, uh, not much. I mean, uh, it, at most, it's that one with, that starts with a U. That's the Earth thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sorry. But, uh, yeah, that's not, no, that's right. My mind. Um, yeah, Earth and... I think but, not Ireland, frequent, uh, but, um, but not a frequent, but not a non-halfing temples. Ah, but you have been to a temple of Lathander, correct? Um, yeah. For a funeral, right? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So you will recognize this immediately to be a temple of some sort. Uh, there are murals upon the wall. There are stars painted on the ceiling. Um, there is a large altar and um, and pews for sitting in. Um, there is a big basin of water at the center and a fountain behind the, the altar that sort of constantly generates water. Um, but, uh, one thing that is interesting is under the paintings on the walls are different names. Um, do you speak Elvish, Anik? No, I do no. not. Okay, but you would recognize them to be written in the Elvish, um, alphabet. It's, um... Not necessarily the elven language, but the elven alphabet. Um, that's it. Uh, it's just the whole room. Obviously, tell people what I see if they want to look, they can, but. Um, Cabo, if you do wander in there, um, you will be able to read one word um, of the many that are on the wall. Um, one of them, it's an ancient elvish word, um, but you have heard it before. It sort of means home, but not like. Your home, your as in your house, but almost like the homeland, if you like, or the sort of yeah, it's it's a meaning more than it is a word. Um, it's where we come from, essentially. Yeah, yeah, something like that. All of the others are not in words you can read. Uh, the murals depict a forested land. Um, with mountains and uh, birch, if you enter this room, you will recognize much of the land to look a bit like Veralia. Although the direct features you will note you've never seen in Veralia. Right? So you've never seen that particular mountain or those particular group of trees or whatever, but it, it looks like Veralia. And as Chiavo stares at a door, I think we'll take five. Hello and welcome back to the second half of Beldania, episode 32, where we're in a speed run so James can watch the football. Uh, Wait, nice. <laughs> no. um, we left off with Kiabo staring at a door. Kiabo, you're still staring at a door, but you've now had a chance to read your spellbook. What are you doing? Uh, I don't think I have anything that can really um, that can really gain entry through this. Uh, so I think my only option is to dispel. Okay. So I would like to make an attempt at dispelling this. Fantastic. I, I don't know if I'll help Hennick. him with this, but uh, but Hennick, knowing that he doesn't know shit about this <clears> kind <throat> of high level magic, will attempt to inspire. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know whether you'll be able to add inspiration to any yep. kind of spell check or not, but 
Um, Kiabo, uh, please list yes. to me all the magical items that you are currently holding. All the magical items I'm currently holding? Yep. Uh oh. Um. Uh, you go to inventory and you read me the colored ones. Right, there's a feather, to there's a feather token of a tree. Mm -hmm. There's an amulet of health. Mm -hmm. A fucking amulet of the sun. Mm -hmm. The robes, the wand, uh, the manufactory thing. Manufactory's potion pouch. Mm -hmm. With the Evermark. Anything else? Um, is the book that'll do? No, and um, the book is very magical, but it won't work. Uh, we'll chuck the potion bow down for me a d6. He's gonna, he's gonna accidentally remove one, one of the one. magic a one? On one of the items. I believe you started with a feather token tree. Um, you yeah. notice that as your dispel magic token, uh, dispel magic spell hits the barrier, it bounces back at you, and you, uh, you dispel the magic on that. Um, it'll come back after a day or so, but right now, um, yeah. Can't use a feather token tree. I was going to say, I thought I had that. But as long as it's not broken. Oh, forever. yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not broken forever. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, it reflects your dispel magic spell. Um, <clears throat> Everything I've, I've thrown at it so far. Maybe you should stop throwing things at it. Spell the thing. Uh, uh, yes, go okay, on, Josh. So... Go on, Josh. Hold on. I want to see what the interruption is. Interruption is. Uh, I'm just going to open the door. You're going to just, what, touch it? Yeah, I'm just going to. If it's got a handle, I'll just. Uh, the hand is slightly behind this yellow barrier. Um, the door uh, sort of hesitates for a moment. It goes green. The, the light goes green. And then it waits. And you find that you can't move the handle. And after a moment, it sort of pushes you back quite gently. That's you, Birch. That's that turn. I'll turn around to everyone else, I would say. I guess we can go home. We're not going to go home over a silly door, Bert. What are you talking about? Um, as that all... Oh, fantastic. Roll initiative. <gasps> I was trapped! <laughs> but this is so good because I love combat. Wait, what just happened? Uh, he tried to open the door, Alessio. Um, and he's not me. an elf. He's not an elf. <laughs> oh, well, sure, well played, Joe. I'm glad I put that puzzle in for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he is most definitely not an elf, and therefore finds himself uh, in a fight. Oh my god, I hope I didn't trip up anyone's plans. I just, I didn't... Well, whatever plans they had, they don't happen. anymore. Um... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Cool, that's uh, quite a lot of large initiative. Um... Mm. I was considering transmuting did... the rock beside the door. Did any one of you get a natural 20? Through. Hello. No, no. Did any, no, 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 no. Great. Okay. Either one of the twenty-eight and uh, that's sorry, the twenty-six and the twenty. Neither of you got a nine twenty. I actually yeah. rolled a twelve. No. Okay. Cool. I rolled a fifteen or a sixteen, which gave me okay. twenty-one. Um, rising, sort of out of this uh, shimmering field, um, leaping forward at Alessio is a huge iron golem. Um, ah. And uh, as it walks yeah. out, um, it strides up towards you, uh, Mr. Alessio McPherson. Um, and it uh, swings down with its fist, with its magical sword, and then it sort of goes as it opens its mouth and uh, sort of cone uh, sort of envelops, I think, only you. Yeah, only you. Um, so the first attack is a 18 to hit you. No! The second attack is a... Wait, I will, um... I will use a superiority die to, um, repost. Okay. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my reaction. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanna check something. Um... Oh, is my combat sheet? Yeah, there we go. Uh, push it. Um, is it, does, is this large? Is this creature large? Um, in what sense? Is it larger like, than you? Yes. Is its size large? No. 
is it size large? Is it larger than large? Yes. Okay, I won't be able to use... Um, sorry, I just want to check... You can out. always work that out, by the way, by the number of squares it's taking. Yeah, so a large creature takes four squares, like this. A huge creature takes... Yeah. Uh, takes nine like that. Yeah. Okay. Um. So that's the thirteen on the. Thirteen will miss. Its second attack is a nineteen to hit you. It fails as well. Okay. Um. And ah, no, I didn't mean to roll again. Um. Sorry. Um. And then I need you to make a Constitution saving throw, please. I got a nat twenty for a twenty-seven. Step. You will take twenty-three poison damage. Oh, I'm um. Wait, is it? Yes, I am resistant to poison because of oh. my obsidian flint dragon plate. Great. Uh, you will take 11. Yes! Oh my god. Alessia is finally paying off. Uh, McPherson, it's your turn. You little metal man. I will destroy you. Mm. And I will... Roll it doesn't back. look particularly emotional in response to that. 20 mm. to hit. That'll miss. No. Um, no way. I'm going to... Use my bonus action to um, activate my spear. Uh huh. And I'm gonna try and hit it again. Extra attack. Oh, that's not gonna hit. That's a thirteen. And I'll definitely miss. Um. I don't know why you then... rolled with a dagger, but. Did I? Yeah. Doesn't matter it's though. Plus ten, anyways. Yeah. Um. I suppose that I will try to use a dagger as my bonus action. You've already used your bonus action to activate your spear oh, literally yeah, four seconds ago. Thank you, sir. Um, Standing there and taking it? Absolutely not. I am going to use my evasive footwork to add a d8 to my AC, and I'm going to use my movement. You're going to do it. One, two, three. Does he take an opportunity of attack? Yes. He will. Um... And that is... Fuck me, I can't roll above a 5 on the dice. 17 will miss. Yes, my AC is 23. So. Why is your AC 23? 15. Because I used evasive footwork. Um, oh, okay. And I rolled a yeah. D8. With, yeah. You got a 2. Yeah, cool. 15, 20, 25, 30. Cool. Birch. Oh. Um, James, I think my initiative may have came in as 12, but I, I rolled a 21. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I did that weird thing. Uh, Torin, you're up. But you've got one more turn to think about your actions. Indeed. Um. Also, just a heads up, Birch, the ceiling's 10 foot tall. No, it's not. No, it's not. We're in this cavern. Never mind, it's not. Carry I'm on. not pulling them up. Don't worry. That's right. Carry on. Uh, Torin. Uh, Torn will 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 go to face the golem, mm -hmm. and uh, the first thing that he will do is make a breath, a fire breath attack. Okay. Uh, it'll have to make a dex save. Mm -hmm. Of DC fifteen. It will not take... make the dex save. Go on. Take. Oh, shovel two e ten. Sorry. It's all right. 18 fire damage. Yeah, so the crystal at the center of this iron golem's chest, so that you see the light sort of splinter out throughout its body. Um, it seems to like that a lot. Uh, more than dislike, it is either liking it. I see. I would tell you it would have healed it, but so far none of you have done it any damage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, you, get, you quickly get the impression that fire will heal it. All right, well... Good that we found that out early. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yes, as a bonus action, mm -hmm. I'm going to cast Shield of Faith. Oh, on yourself? On myself. Mm hmm. And I will. I will fucking approach it and uh, take a second attack. Yep. A Twenty-one. That will miss. Ooh. Okay. That's it. 
Cool. Uh, Butch. <clears throat> I'm gonna raise my palm and like little bits of energy will come out of it and hover on over towards like above Torin's head and then combine to form the shape of an eagle. I'm gonna, that's be somebody in my totem. Yep. Um, uh, whereabouts? Because it, it's uh, it only has a limited radius, right? So uh, it's got a thirty foot radius. Okay, like it's got a thirty foot Yeah, bear with me a second, please. Uh, so it was an eagle. Yes, a blue spectral eagle. I can't promise it'll be blue or spectral. Can you promise it's an eagle? Uh, I can promise it's a bird. It's uh, looking like a hawk. Where where do you want to place it, Josh? Like there. Um, yeah, I was just specifying just so I, I like everyone knows what it looks like in my head. Um. Uh, bear with me a second. Uh, make this pale, pale yellow. Uh, you guys can't see the aura, can you? No. How about now? Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, cool. Okay, that's the aura. Yeah, carry on. Okay, that's my bonus action. And then as my action, I'm going to cast a spell. Mm-hmm. Um, I need that guy to make a wisdom saving throw as I cast Dissonant Whispers and what he's hearing. Do you guys, have you, like, I've probably heard the sound like female foxes make where it sounds like someone's screaming bloody murder. That's the sound it makes. Apparently it's when female foxes, it's their way of telling male foxes they want to mate. Um, that's, that's what that guy hears right now. Okay. Um, he gets a 14. Oh, uh, that's my... Oh, no, that's that's not my... Way below your Yeah, that's a fail. Okay. Um, so... He turns will... and attempts to walk into... Uh, walk away, but right behind him is the wall. So, like, yeah, he sort of bumps into the wall. Um, yep. Uh, he takes uh, a measly nine uh, psychic damage. You'll quickly discover that he is immune to psychic damage. Him, he's immune to psychic, he drains fire. What can we do? Um, but Torin, you will get can an I... opportunity attack as he turns and walks yeah, briefly away say, from you and back. I'm going to say, yes, I will take the opportunity attack. Fantastic. 20, well, that hit. <laughs> Maybe hit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll... Uh... To be fair, you guys have been going up by one each time, right? <laughs> <laughs> So that's an 11 slashing, and then I'm gonna pump a level. Oof, I think it looks pretty strong. So let's do a third level. Smoke. Okay, you don't want to find out if he's immune to radiant damage first. <laughs> oh, uh, no, I'm God. joking. Go ahead, give me some dips. Where are they at? Here we go. Did you know you could be rolling your damage on the dark bomb dice roller? Oh, I could. You could. Uh, it has crits Ooh. and dangerous crits involved. Um, oh, 16. Yeah. Okay. Um, he takes the full radiant whack and the full slashing damage. Just lovely. Very nice. Um, Birch. Any uh, anything else? Um, no action bonus action. Okay. Yeah. No. Oh. Any? Yeah, uh, Hennick is gonna walk up a little ways. Mm -hmm. um, it actually doesn't. Well, I mean, I guess for the future it'll be worth being in the aura. It's not gonna matter what he's doing right now, because he's going to go with the old fourth level shatter. Okay. Should be able to stick it up. Yeah, it's fine. Behind where it hits him, um, not Torin. Side, yep. Um, and he should, I assume, as a creature made of inorganic materials such as stone, crystal, or metal, have disadvantage on his saving throw. Ooh. Constitution, though, so yeah, probably high. That's a three for an eight. Yes, uh, that's that's not high. No. Um, so uh, and it doesn't add the extra dice in that thing, so I don't know if this will come through or not. But here is the fifth, the fourth level version. It does double damage to constructs, right? No, no, it's just no, the, it's, it's just, just the advantage. advantage. Oh, okay, yeah, but it's twenty-one thunder damage. 
Respectable. Does he suck that in and become awesome and more powerful like everything else? Ah, uh, no, that's where the double damage comes from. 21 thunder damage, you say? Yes. Okay, you notice, like, the, the little, sort of, the screws and nuts and bolts that put him together sort of tremble temporarily, and he looks thoroughly rocked by your thunder. Um, it's a good job yours doesn't do double damage, otherwise that would be a humongous amount of damage. I think quite a lot of constructs have vulnerability to thunder damage, so if you double doubled, it would be really quite insane. Uh, but yeah, he yeah, looks he, he looks like he didn't like that. That's not very nice. Yeah, um, but seeing how hard it is for other people to hit him, um, yeah, but still got one of my um, uh, inspiration going, but I'll, I'll throw one to Alessio for now. Okay, great. Uh, speaking of which, Kiabo. Right, um, so, uh, I'm very tempted to try to control this guy, but I feel like Torin might have this under control, so I shall shimmy myself over it. Torin that swung um, three times and hit once, and also healed it. <laughs> yeah, but I think, Torin will be able to, I think Torin will be able to take a hit or two, so oh, yeah, I'm going sure. to, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise up my hands and, um, begin, begin, converse, begin, begin converting my, um, original fight for magic and uh, I will shoot forward an acid bolt instead of a lightning bolt at this construct okay uh, I would like this yeah, to I'm on it, I'm on save, it. please uh, that's 10 that will be a fail that would be 29 acid damage let's see how it feels mm. about it doesn't seems seem to be super effective or super weak it just seems to be pretty chill um, it's good. Um, you strike him for 29 acid damage. Any bonus action out of you? Or was your bonus action to convert the damage? Uh, that was just a regular part of the spell casting. Um, I will not use a bonus action. Mm -hmm. that, that's cool. interesting that he isn't weak to it, so. Nope. So we learn. Uh, um, he will chop down at Torin. Uh, that's a natural 20. Oh, <laughs> Oh, and oh, ironically, it summoned a really cool being. Um, you are currently 40 feet away. I can't remember if I made it 30 or 60. Let's see here. Don't ask me. 60. 60. Hey. Okay. Don't get cocky. When a creature that you can see within 60 feet of you hey. can hear you scores a critical hit, you can use your reaction to expend one of your uses bardic inspiration to turn it into a normal hit. And okay. also reduce it by the number I roll on the old D8. Uh, which is... One. Okay, so you'll take 23 <laughs> bludgeoning damage. Oof. Then he'll swing with his sword. Talk that is a 17 to hit. That is a miss. And then he will Thorable. punch you again. Funny. Deflect sword. 20 is also a miss. I good. am rolling so badly. 21 to hit. I haven't rolled above a 10 21. yet except one, not 20. 21 is still a miss. Cool. Love that for you, Alessio. Um, oh, sorry. Um... <clears throat> ah, the clone. Um, sorry, I need a con save, please. Sorry, I did get my recharge. Uh, 19. It'll take 20 poison damage. Ah, uh, ooh, sorry. Sorry, I'll retcon that. I just realized I made four attacks against you, so I can't use the breath. Oh, nice. um, so heal yourself up at 20. My apologies, I misread that. Um, McPherson, what to do? Seeing as my bestie Torin is struggling, I'm going to use all of my movement to run here. Hopefully mm -hmm. this will keep me out of range of this bloody column. And as I run, I'm going to swap out Felicity since he is resistant to psychic damage. And I'm going to equip my Dagger of Venom in one hand and I'll have my Longsword in another one. Okay, no shield. Um, I don't think... Yeah, I, w I didn't have the shield to begin with anyways. Oh, you didn't? No, uh, my siege is 21. Okay, cool, sorry, I so misread that. Okay. No props. Um, so yeah, that's um, exactly what I'm going to do. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to strike it with the longsword as the main attack. Cause my, my is it a magical longsword? Longsword plus one it is, right? Um, I don't think it is, James. I don't okay. think it is. Um, I think... Alessio would know enough about constructs and summoned creatures that he wouldn't have put Felicity away in that case. 
Um, James, can I take can I take that con save that I rolled anyway as my concentration save sure. for the uh, shield? Um, yeah. So, uh, Bruno, you would know that to wield magical weapons against this creature. Uh, you can keep then... Felicity out and just not hit him with the psychic part. You want and just Felicity and the dagger. Um. Yeah, let's do that. Let's okay. do that. Cool. Um, just to save me the trouble of going, hey, your hit does nothing. Um, your hit misses. Your hit does nothing. Twice. Your hit does nothing. <laughs> um, you do have Bardic, right? But you know that 12 plus 8 is 20, which is what you wrote last time and you didn't hit. Yeah. Okay. Bonus action? Josh, were you going to say something? No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't like you enough. Um, He's saving it for someone else. I'm <laughs> going to bonus action hit with my Dagger uh, Venom. Okay. I will use my reaction to make my eagle squawk a bit to show you a few blood like pointers and will give you advantage on your roll. 23. That'll hit. From a 22. Um, Little do you know whether that was useful or not. Mm. Nine. Yep. Yeah. Nine. That's it. Um... And I think, considering that Torin is kind of guilty and sticking Do you need to do anything to that dagger, or does it just make the poison I need to use my action to coat it. Um, Fuck that for a laugh and a bottle of shit. Yeah, I hear the need to poison damage anyway. Uh. (laughs) Yeah, it's alright. You know what? I think at this point I'll drop this fucking dagger, because whatever. And I'm going to just yield my longsword with both hands. I'm going to action surge. And I'm your non magical like, longsword? Um, fuck or, it, I'll keep or felicity. I'll felicity with both hands. What is felicity? Spear. It's a spear, it's a magical spear. It's a spear, okay. It's a magical so you can two handed it, can you? It's a yeah, spear, yeah, it, it goes up to d10, I guess. No, it goes up to a d8. Does 18 oh, hit? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. And 18 misses. Um, you time. still have bardic inspiration. Oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Yep. Well, I'm gonna you know, make you take that thirteen the, for your second attack. On the course. eighteen, <laughs> on the eighteen, I will roll the bardic inspiration. Yep. Ooh. That's a seven. Twenty-five will hit. Okay. Um, I'm gonna make this a disarming attack, and I'm gonna use my once per day to make it a critical hit. Uh, you. Okay. Do you want to not use a disarming attack? Have you got anything else that you could use for that? You can't disarm him, it's part of his body. Oh, that's... Uh... Sorry. It wouldn't make much difference anyway. His fists do the same amount of damage. Um, um, do you want I to use will, a different yeah. version for a plus eight deeps? I think precision. I'll use something. a precision attack. Yeah, yeah, cool. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, so you're making it an at 20. Um, so that's with the additional D8 of superiority dice. Twice. So it's two four D8s, right? Yeah. Um, let's roll that. 48 plus modifier, I believe. So that's 17 plus 8. 25, cool. Nice. Good, pretty good, pretty good. Um, yeah. Torin, I'm trying to help you, man. Get out of here. Get out of here! No. I don't love you anymore. I'm more armor class than you have. Um, I'm more HP. Yeah, but I'd rather die than he dies. (laughs) Oh, well, speaking of which, um, Golden Brand, tis you. Yes, Torin is going to valiantly defy his comrades' uh, pleas and join him at the front it lines. Okay. Stand right next, shoulder to shoulder with, uh, with uh, Alessio. I'll link my arm with you then. <laughs> That's real <laughs> helpful for combat. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Torin. How are you doing? Um, and I will uh, take a couple of wax. Mm-hmm. First of which will only be an eighteen. That'll miss. The second of which will only be a 19. That'll miss. I thought so. I'm well, wealthy. Um, indeed. Uh, already concentrating. All right, that's it. Cool. Uh, Butch. Um, so I'm just going to, like... <laughs> yell to those in the front like i hope you're not squeamish um as 
through the cracks of the walls, locusts begin to crawl out and then take flight as they swarm around this construct as I cast Insect Plague. Uh, I think that's a con save. Gosh, I don't see how you're going to target this and not hit. Ooh. It's a 20 foot circle. Maybe like that? Yeah. Okay. It's an ongoing effect, is it? It sure is. Okay, cool. Um, yep, yeah, so uh, that won't touch Torin. That's fine. Uh, can you click no. display on VTT for me, please? My knowledge of spells is quite good, but not perfect. No, that's cast. Click display on VTT. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so it is a constitution saving throw. Nineteen? Uh, that'll pass, so it'll take half of twenty-five piercing damage. That's um, twelve, yep. Yep, and then at the end of its turn, whilst it's in the area, it needs to redo it. If it ends its turn in the area, yes. When it first centers there, yep. Oh, does that conclude your turn? Um. Yep. Now you don't have any bonus actions? With you on obsessing over my character's bonus actions, I'm not gonna heal in word, I'm not gonna misty step, I'm right, not cool. gonna. You've already got a totem. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Henek. <laughs> Um, I don't know that I could think of anything that would be as good as what I did last time. I should okay. probably do it again. Yep, shadow. Um, so, uh, yep. Uh, Straight con save, 16. Save. Uh, 16 yeah, is, is going to hit it. Okay. Um, but this is so good. I'm going to silvery barbs it. Make him try again. Nine? That doesn't pass. Who's getting the advantage? Me. Um, who's getting the advantage is going to be, um, Alessio, because I'm worried that Torrin's going to be unconscious. <laughs> um, yeah, not only um, that, but he would have, he might end up using it on his concentration <laughs> check instead of his attack, right? Right. Um, yeah. cool. Okay, so, so Alessio yeah, have so advantage Alessio the next and the, uh, the fourth level shadow damage is going to be... Yep. And it'll do the same amount you roll. 36. 36. Yep. He is now wounded, halved and doubled, obviously, is just going to result wow. in the same number. Um, but it's not halved. It's half. I silvery barbs, and he got a nine. Oh, of course. Yeah. Sorry. So, sorry. Yeah. You're right. You did silvery barbs. That was the whole point of that. Oh, yeah. yeah. He is so wounded. He's not severely wounded. But he is. Uh, he didn't like that. He, you rocked him. Um. I don't think anybody wants to be moved around. So uh, oh. that's it for me. Cabo. Uh. So I would least like to give people a chance to retreat if need be. Uh, let's, uh, cause some tentacles to come rising out of the ground. Okay. Uh, let's center that on there. Yep. Uh, I will require him to make a, or this construct, should I say, to make a deck save. Sorry, he rolls with advantage. G17. Um, so I'm just coming twice. Yeah, 10. Okay, with a 10, it will be restrained. Uh, it takes uh, nine bludgeoning damage. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it is uh, fully restrained by the center holes. It can only get out on strength or dex checks. Uh, that'll be me. Is this thing uh, restrained? Yes. He's definitely restrained now by the cynicals. Yep. Sorry, Josh's internet's gone, but mine has remained and it's back now. It's a very weird nice. situation. Odd. Um, yeah, very odd. That should be impossible. Um, cool, that leads us to the creature. Um, is it a check to get out of that? Yeah, it's restraint? a strength or dex check. As an action? Yes, I think so. How about no? Um, he will misty step. Get out. Um, he will just misty step. Ooh. And he will hit Hennick. 23? Obviously. 
24 damage. Okay. 22. Yep. Uh, yeah, sorry, the dice are being slow. 24 damage. Sure, sure. Oh, I'm rolling damage before yeah. I've even hit you. That bite actually missed. 18? No, uh, that hits. Okay. Uh, oh, that's... you know what? No, it doesn't, because I have that, that stupid manufacturing thing that lets me cast shield. Once, yeah. No, no, I can't, I can't, though. I use my reaction to do silvery barbs in. It does, I don't get my reaction back to the start of my next turn. Oh, how rude. Well, turn, yeah, so another 18 so, bludgeon, uh, another 19 bludgeoning damage. That didn't quite kill me yet. And a sword hit again. <laughs> There's no way that's missing. No, then I'm done. 26. Yeah. Alessio. Well unconscious. Oh, he's just got to make his recharge check. Oh, no, he did recharge, didn't he? But then he didn't use it on Torrin. Oh, I should have poisoned breath. I'm an idiot. All right. Um, he's no longer restrained, by the way, because he TP'd out of all of that mess that you guys left up there. Um, Bastard. McPherson. Does this thing have, like, a control panel on the back? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm only asking because I actually had an encounter in which... <laughs> okay. Um, I five. once did one of these with the Iron Golem where you could remove the gem from the center of its chest. Uh, um, that's how they killed it. Um, it was really cool. Um, All right. But no. Um, I believe... <laughs> would I still have the advantage... From yeah. Silver bubs. And this thing is is malfunctioning. Is that what the red dot means? No, he's injured. Injured. Is he malfunctioning? Um, Birch, can, can you can you take care of Henning? Can you help him? That's yes. you, Josh. <laughs> okay. okay. I know. For a second, I was like, when is Birch gonna start talking? <laughs> yes. I will take care of him. Okay. Um, 18, nope. unfortunately. Do I have advantage on all nope. attacks? Just first? Just first. 12. Nope. You're rolling bad, we're rolling bad. Well, I'm rolling bad. Um, and I'm gonna use my, um... The question, isn't the whole point of precision attack to allow you to get a plus 8 to hit? Yeah, um, I just, just... Uh... Fine, that's that's actually a good shout, and if that's okay with your... Isn't that the then... whole point of Battle Busters? <laughs> it's just because I'm used to being able to hit everyone, you know? Oh, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a so big change, doesn't um, it? 26. Uh, yes, what? So, it, it, no, it's... Oh, you've plus... gone and retrospectively added it to your first roll? Sure, to why the not? last one, to the... Well, the last one would be a 20 to hit. 12 plus 8 is 20. Oh. Yeah, that's okay. why. Why don't you use it on the next hit, right? On the bonus action attack. Just give me an attack roll and add 8 to it. It'll make far more sense. Because that's usually how precision attack works. You usually declare I'll, it when you attack. I'll use, my reaction. I'll use my reaction to give him advantage. Okay, bonus action. Attack with advantage, add 8. Well, yeah, I'm going to have to add the 8 anyways. Uh, 24 I'll... hit. How embarrassing of Alessio, man. 24 will hit. This is traumatizing. Oh. After today, I can guarantee you, he's going to be like, I want weapons to make me hit. Um, can I use any of my superiority die? No, You've I just can't. use precision. Yeah, I can't. The creature is severely Damage. wounded. Birch, please help Hennig. He's like literally the only father what? figure I have. <laughs> Darren, you're up. Um, so with Torin's movement, I can actually make it to Hennick. Mm -hmm. I sort of like come around him. Yep. And with an action, I am going to bend way down and uh, touch touch my good friend Hennick and uh, lay on hands him for the full power of my abilities, which is 45 health. Nice. Thank you, Torin. You're like a brother to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, any bonus action from you, Torin? Um, if I can use a bonus action to pull him up, like, to standing. Yeah, yeah, you can stand him up. Little guy, okay. uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look him in the eye and say, you've got to get out of here. And uh, I will turn to face this golem. Mm -hmm. Protect my friend. Um, Butch. 
that's me. Suddenly realizing that both my damage cantrips are poison and it's probably immune to poison. I warned you about this uh, when you created the character. Yep. Well, it's not like I had any other good options. Can you move the Locust Storm? Is that a possibility or is that stuck there? Have I what? Can you move Locust Storm or is it just stuck there now? Yeah, it's stuck there, unfortunately. So okay. I'll drop concentration on it. Um, which so 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 so. Well, it frees up your concentration to do something else, I guess. I guess. If one cares. Um, is this Get thing out of sentient? Here. Sorry? Is this thing sentient? Do you think? Or is it lost like... It hasn't engaged in conversation with you yet. Do you think I could try and convince it with the temptation of the Awakened spell? No. That'll give it it's not, a, it's not a beast. <laughs> so? <laughs> or a plant. Does it have to be a beast? I think it has to be a beast or plant. Or a plant. It's not mm. a creature either, it's a construct. Alright. So I'm also not fun. sure you came down here with a 100 gold agate. Um, anyway. <laughs> it's actually a thousand. <laughs> it's a hundred in building, yeah. Oh. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I will bonus action Misty Step away. Okay. Uh, I'll go stand next to the lion. Um, and then I... You have may... non-damage cantrips, right? I have a other cantrip that I could use, but it's a strength save, and it's probably going to be really good at them. But I'll... I'll do it anyways. So, out of nowhere, two badgers from earlier pop up out of the ground. Only their hands. One holding the sock as it wraps around one ankle, and the other one using the string from the cup and ball around the other ankle as I cast uh, Binding Vines as a strength save. Or oh, he is... Restrained. restrained? <laughs> yeah, restrained. it's restrained, but it's a 24. It's very cool, though. And honestly, restraining it's far more useful than finding out that it's still immune mm -hmm. to poison damage. Um, mm -hmm. That's the point, right? Cool. Um, Henny, you've been stood up. There's a towering iron golem in front of you. I, I, I don't know if I'm worth that, uh, uh, Torin, but th thank you. Let's see if I can get clear. And I'll sort of sidle around. I can go right through Torn, even if well, yep. I, anybody can yep. through your allies. <laughs> mm -hmm. But just so that legs. if I yep. attempt, which I will almost certainly fail, but attempt to push him away from me, uh, now there's a clear path on the other side of him. So, um, yeah, I think I did make the ruling um, right when we gave you Telekinesis. Shove, oh, it's, that uh, if it's, it's huge big. or okay. above, yeah, that I think it's. Well, I know I mean, that, as it's written, move, it doesn't say that, but yeah, well, yeah, I, did, yeah, I yeah, thought you were moving way. there so that Shadow wouldn't hit you as well. <laughs> no, I, well, I don't know. I guess that's. I hadn't really thought about what I was going to do until I could try to get away. So, right. um, yeah, I can't just keep trying to hurt him. Um, I mean, frankly, I'm almost as healthy as I was at the beginning of the fight now. <laughs> exactly right. Um, he is severely wounded. Yeah, so I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe I will do that just to make it easier to, to place mm -hmm. the thing, but it yep. should be doable. It will be fine, it will be fine. Um, um, you, don't need to, um, you don't need to place it. Just, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, yeah, let's, um, well, let's keep that fifth level slot just in case I need it for sense, and so we'll do, mm. four, do fourth again. Evan on the concept. Um, nice. Boom, so <laughs> click that there, and that is going to be... 24 thunder damage. Is that, I think that's almost 200, no, 150 damage you've done in this fight. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, it's you, not get voice, you can crack open a stupid thing. <laughs> stupid thing. Is. <laughs> Poor guy. Any bonus action for me, Henrik? Um. Anybody look like they need a tiny, minuscule amount of health other than me? Um, no. Torin. I mean, it's not. Like it's 10. Yeah, no, it's better if someone goes down. No, that's it. That's all I got. Okay, cool. Kiabo! Work out if he uh, gets hit by lightning or not, by any chance. You haven't worked that out yet. But you know he gets hit by acid. I'll stick, I'll stick to what I know. Uh, let's go for a uh, Agnaz's Acid Scorcher. Okay. Straight out acid of some of it. Scorcher. 16 uh, on the yeah, save. Uh, so, sorry. Um, no, it's not. It's uh, 14 on the save. Uh, that's a fail, so he will take 17 acid. Okay. 
Nice. He's not dead yet. Damn. Okay. No. Second, did your turn, Kevin? That is my turn. Okay. Um, he is going to step to here. Oh, he's not. No, we don't need to do that. Um, Henek and Torin, uh, constitution, constitution saving throws, please. As he breathes poison upon you both. You'll both take 40 poison damage. Four what, zero. Was, what was uh, Henek's save? Oh. Five. Yeah. <laughs> Five. So even with the plus four, it doesn't matter. Yeah. 40? Um, yep. Yeah, four zero. Um, and then Torin, he will try and punch you. 23 to hit. Poison, yes. Uh, 40 poison, 4 zero. I'm resistant to poison, so. Cool, 20. Nice. Um, love that for you. Uh, 23 to hit you, Torin. Uh, it will, but I'm going to use my reaction to cast shield from my ring of shielding. Mm-hmm. Okay, love that. And then he will sword at you. Um, 24 to hit. Nope. No, you've got like 27 armor class right now, haven't you? Yep. Uh, look fierce and you're up. You're currently flanking. I am. You are. That's so good. Do I have advantage? That is what flanking grants, yes? Yes. <clears throat> oh, I rolled a 27. That's nice. Yes. That's a hit. Yes. 10 damage. Nice. Extra attack. 20. A 20 will miss. Precision attack! You I have to declare a precision attack before oh, you attack. Oh, I need to declare. Okay. I believe so. Let me just double check that. When you make a weapon attack roll, you can expend one spirited item added to the roll before or after the roll. Sorry. Go ahead. Add mm. that eight. What a roller coaster of emotions this combat is becoming. <laughs> Twenty-three. You discovered its armor class. Please describe it quickly. Yeah. The mind it has one hit point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay because, because because I planned this in my head for sessions. I've been waiting for this moment in which I'm the last one to hit. So, as I see Hennick come up from the ground and use his strength, I'm almost inspired by him and the leader that he's become. And as I see, like, the brother in combat that I found in, in Torin takes so much injury, I grab my spear and I run to its back. I push it in and, like, I'll push myself forward and I'll strike down on its head with my longsword. Love that. The longsword doesn't been affect this it. For a while. The longsword doesn't affect it, but the spear is really cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and with that, you have defeated the golem. And that is the end of combat. Thanks, fuck, we're all alive. The door doesn't Ooh. seem to be affected in any way whatsoever. Damn, still watered. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tear up a little. I'm just, I'm just glad you guys are okay. <laughs> I'm not crying. It's, it's the underground. Put yourself together, man. I'm good. I'm good. Just, just thought that for a second. Nope. All good. All good. We all fought valiantly. Yep. <clears throat> did. No, I mean I thought that. As well as you, Birch. Thank you. Yes. Great warrior. It's I have a question. Sorry. Um, no, sorry. Uh, Chiavo, your name is, right? Lion? Leon? Yes. Yes, that's me. What's. Um, if what you your book was a um, moon elf, uh, I have two questions. A, if putting the book up against the ward, will it disperse it? And second of all, if it doesn't. <laughs> Um, why don't you ask it if it knows how to disperse it? Because it seems to not care that I touch it being a wood elf, but perhaps I'm the wrong kind of elf, and it very much didn't like a human. Can't blame it. Touching it. Um, so maybe <laughs> you can ask the book. That was exactly then, what I, I was then, considering just, doing, yes. And then after, after flooding all of that, like, talking out, he'll then turn to the little locusts that are still going back into the cracks of the walls and just be like goodbye hmm. uh what is it you're doing Kiava? would you say uh well first off i would like to um consult theseus and present him to oh. uh, present to him the uh ward see what he makes of theseus it. has so had more just... spotlight today than he has not since the beginning of the campaign yes indeed um, he's been yes. very useful uh he tells you to alter yourself idiot um 
That's that's the easiest opinion. Alter yourself, idiot. Um, he'll even provide the spell. Alter self. If he provides me with the spell and I'm allowed to just cast it straight away, then I'll bloody well do so. It'll cost you... Is it a second level spell? Self, Alter self, I think so. It's much higher than that, I thought. I don't know. No. I'll look in my I think the sky right. self is first level. Alter self is second level, I believe. Um, so you can go ahead and add it to your spellbook because your spellbook already actually, has it. Right, yeah. um, but it will cost you yeah. 10 gold pieces. Oh, I'll take the 10 gold out. That's no worry. Kiabu. Yes. Whilst you are with Theseus, may, may I inquire on a matter that I've been pondering for a while? Oh. What does your book know of someone called the Masked Mage? Was Masked there anyone... Mage. With that Elias, or any tales amidst... What do the... you know of the Masked Mage? True story. What does what Alessio you know the of the Masked, masked Mage? <laughs> I actually know a lot, because um, I've taken a lot of notes of stuff that you guys said. And um, he, also oh, fought, okay. he also fought a lot of the people that were under his control. So he never really liked him, and he never forgot about him. Okay. Yeah. You see, you see Alessio pull like a little, a little book where he strategizes his every step. So yes, the masked mage. Um, the book knows Worth nothing. Worth inquiry. Sorry? The book knows nothing of the masked mage. Mm. Must well, be too young for yeah, Theseus to not old enough. It, it was a cold lead. I didn't expect to find anything. I was just wondering. Maybe. Mm -hmm. But that's just a theory. A game theory. Sure. I right, suppose. Okay. Alter self, yeah? self then. Um, what are you yes, altering your? How, what are you doing with your alter self? Um, so, I would like to uh, present myself as one of these moon elves. As a moon like elf. To attempt... Wild elf. Wild elf. Wild elf. Then yes. Okay. Wild elf. How um, are you doing? Yeah. That? Wait. No. No. He, he oh. said to alt, alt myself, idiot. So I'll present myself as. That's a good point. I need but, to get but, but, with these elves, don't I? Yeah, I was just gonna say I don't. Do you need to? I mean, I'm assuming you need to know what they look like. Yeah, that's, a good, that's a good. That's good question. Like, if, if I present Theseus myself as a moon knows, elf, it could though. be a fucking disaster, right? If they want a wild elf. But ask Theseus, Theseus what they look like. Yeah, if Theseus can yeah, help Yeah. Okay. Let's um. To... Yeah, I'll, I'd so, like Theseus to present uh, to me a projection of what they look like, because I'm sure Theseus he, uh, would be very capable. He doesn't do so. He instead um, explains to you that you all you need to do is prevent your, present yourself as the race wild elf um and he will allow you to sort of um he will guide you in casting this so that it's almost like you believe you're a wild elf right because it's only looking for the essence of your race it's not looking for like oh, let's face yeah. it the door's not looking at you right um yeah. uh, the it, it will give you an image of uh, a wild elf though. um looks quite like birch to be honest um wood elf wild elf not a huge amount of difference in the way they look um, a little bit of time, time to uh, make very tiny changes, I guess. It might be worth noting they are not extremely pale for any players who are expecting that. Um, the image denoted is not an extremely pale elf. Um, normal looking elf. Yeah, just a fairly normal looking elf, exactly. Um, and mm -hmm. if you then cast this alter self spell on yourself, um, everybody will see Kiavos briefly drowned in a robe. Um, uh, this, this little elf <laughs> this huge robot um, but you will be able to reach through and as soon as you put your hand on the door the spell disappears and the door opens inside this room with, ah. the, with the warding down you will see two things immediately the first is a very thin spiral of what appears to be air in the middle of the room um, it comes from floor from, from the floor and it leads up to the ceiling it's about <clears throat> three inches in diameter. Um, and next to it is what looks like a stone plug. And there is nothing else in the room. Spiral that goes upwards. Mm -hmm. All the way to the ceiling. Swirling. Floor to ceiling. Like a really thin tornado. When you say plug, like... You know the thing you put in the bath? That stops the water yeah, from bath, going bath, down yeah, the plug hole. Yeah. And yeah, that's what a plug is. It's not... You don't need to plug it in. It's not electric. 
Yeah, no, I just wanted to, I just wanted a more description of it. That was all. I just wanted it's, to know what the hell this thing was. It's circular. It looks like it might fit in the exact hole that that little whirlpool is coming out of. I really didn't think this this part of the campaign was going to be rocket science, Jamel. No, it, it's not rocket science. I just want to see more of what the fuck this plug looks like. It's like it's a, it's a stone it's a plug. plug. Is it yeah. just like a it's, it giant, looks like if you, know? you put it in the floor, the floor would look like the floor instead of like yeah, a whirlpool. Something really quite intricate, not something really basic and simple. Okay. Real simple. Oh, Penix that's has only not yeah, moved it himself in, because he's too weak. <laughs> it's yeah, it's only a little thing. Like it's uh, oh, one thing that is interesting. Like... Yeah. No, it's. It, I said the hole is three inches wide. Mm. Yeah. Any one of you can plug the hole. Yeah, yeah I'm plugging it with uh, right. with my telekinetic, telekinetic hand. hand no I love has. that. You plug the hole, and for a moment there is complete silence in the room. And then the entire floor. So it begins to tremble. Interesting. I'll grab everyone's hands. Okay. Yeah. Same. After a short period that feels like an earthquake. Um, <clears throat> so. Yeah. You're still in the same room. It's now empty. Just a little booty jiggle. I'm gonna let go of Alessio's hand. Just. <laughs> Oh no, mm. Alessio! I feel so I feel for you so, um, so slighted. What's what's happened? Where do you feel bad? I too would clean my hands if I would touch myself. <laughs> uh, regardless, um, you are obviously come to a dead end. Um, so if you would like to head back, which I'm assuming the party yeah. would probably rush to do, right, to find yes. out what the impact yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 is, yeah, yeah. Um, you will hear trumpeting. Um, and as you get to the room that you were previously in, that you dug your way into, um, you find yourself standing in what is now only a 40-foot pit, as opposed to a 240-foot pit. Um, you open your eyes as you come up to a huge pile of wreckage, really. Um, it looks like a whole village was crushed under sand east. And circling oh. above it are six dragons. Two silver, two gold, one bronze, and one brass. Mm. Hello, dragons. Swooping in at almost a million miles an hour is a golden dragon who comes and lands before the group. Doesn't recognize much, but looks at the rest of you. You have done it. You? Was it you? It was you, right? He sort of I it was. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Is it it good? He's just checking. Is it a good thing? Is it a good thing? My friends and family are freed. Of course, it then is. Yes, a good thing. it was. It was us. But All he this guy here sort of bends it. his head down to you, and your lineage is already blessed. Torin Goldenbrand. You know I, me. Uh, you know me. You made me a promise about. Oh, that was the same thing. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and he sort of says, uh, but if I might bestow another gift upon you all. Whoa. Thanks, dragon person. That's really nice. It and would be sort most of, appreciated. Uh, he sort of waves his wing and a shimmer of golden magic settles down upon each of you. And with gift that... Gift of the metallic yeah, dragon? That is where we'll end. Gift of the metallic oh, dragon. Gift time, that's for sure. We got our own fairy so, godmother. First of all, before we get on to whatever you just got from the dragon, uh, Torin and Alessio, if you would like to add the bonded soul feat that you so long ago oh, deserved. Oh, nice. Brother! Before Natasha took a hike out of the campaign. My brother. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hennick, I'm going to let you choose. Um, you can have a resilient feat, whichever one you wish for. Um, and you will have the stat upgrade from it. So I was um, I was going to say have resilient con, but actually it may not be what you want. So take a resilient feat, whichever you wish. All right. Um, and uh, Captain Chiavo. Captain Chiavo. Let me just go and get the name proper. Captain Chiavo. Captain Chiavo. Yeah. <laughs> um, I believe the feat is called like Archmage or something. Oh, shit. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, um, so ignore the time spent, uh, golden time spent, um, and obviously your intelligence score will not increase. 
Um, but more importantly, it's your spell save DC going up by one and an extra cantrip. Nice. Lovely. That will put you Very all in line nice. with the amount of feats that Birch arrived with. Um, so that's why Birch isn't getting anything, because I knew that I was giving out a feat today, but you didn't. Um, mm. And then each of you may take a gift of the metallic dragon gold. Oh. It's, oh. it's double feat day today. Wait, um, I'm struggling today. to find the feat that you've given me and Rico. Oh, it's called Bonded Souls. Bonded Souls. Yeah, should be available. You are soul bonded with an ally. Your hit points are interchangeable as a bonus action on your turn. As long as you are within 50 feet of your bonded ally, you can reduce your hit points to increase theirs or vice versa. Um, additionally, if your bonded takes uh, damage or an attack, you can use your reaction to take the damage instead, um, reducing their damage to zero and increasing yours. Um, Yo! Yep. The vulnerabilities and resistances are calculated first before the damage is exchanged. So if, for example, Torrin is hit with fire damage, you can take the damage that he would take with his resistance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you take full, if you take 30 fire damage and Torrin takes it for you, he'll take the full 30, not... Is, is Torrin resistant to poison? No, don't think so. But no. between the two okay, of you... Okay, that's good, because I have yeah. something to bring to the but table. Obviously, if yeah. he takes I'm, poison I'm damage, right? Fire, though. If he yeah. takes poison damage and you take the damage for him, you won't take half. Right? You'll take the full amount. It's only oh. if you're hit with poison damage that you resist oh. it, and then he can take... So, resistance first, then you exchange the damage. Got you, got you. Um, oh, still, still useful, still useful. So good, it's gonna be, yeah. It's going to be great for you two. Uh, Frontline so buddies. Um, and yeah, yeah I mean... And I can finally sacrifice myself for him. Yeah, and Hennig got pounded into the ground by an iron golem, which is bound to make you resilient to something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what... It's not originally what I planned on giving you, but I thought it was more thematic at the time. Um, so yeah, with that... Um, we get our... HP for this level yet? Uh, yes, know. you are at. You are in fact. You have next level's HP as far as I'm aware. Um, oh, okay. You're very big um, on the HPs. Is it gift of the metallic dragon charisma, intelligence, or wisdom? Uh, whichever it is, you're going to remove the stats. So doesn't ah. matter. Yeah, as per usual, feats given out don't give the stats. The exception being Hennick, your resilient feat will grant. Okay. Um, Wait, so we can manifest wings? Yeah, you can't fly with oh. wings. <laughs> Spectral oh wings to like God. protect to protect our. Yeah, I should have worked this out when I was giving it. James, um, I gasped so hard, I think I clenched my jaw. <laughs> you will also be able to use the cure wounds spell uh, once per day. Yes. I think it is, yeah. So you can you can pick each other up off the ground and you can defend each other with your manifested wings to shield others. Oh, um, you can't goodness. shield yourself with it, right? Um, you no. can only shield yeah. others with it. So just to he give you a heads up on that one. Um, but yeah, uh, with that, that is where we're going to end. So. We'll come to NVP. But the the feat says when you are another creature. Oh. Oh yeah, sorry. It does say shield you or others. You can use it to shield yourself. Sorry, oh, it's God. just because I've got it on uh, Felix. So yeah, cool. And I've used right. it on myself. Well, with that, we come to the timeless tradition of MVPs. And dare I start with Jamal? I guess I must. Um, Jamal, you can have one. I know, I have one. <laughs> Tell me more about the plug. <laughs> there seems to be some really intricate things, some really detailed things. The, the frustration great on Jodai's face when you said that. It was like, for fuck's sake, plug it in, it's not rocket science. That was great. That was exactly how I was feeling. I, I, I just wanted more, just, I just wanted to, like, he's like, it, I was expecting you to be like, oh, it's this really intricately crafty. The only thing detail. I know about it, and I will tell you this, because I guess there's no way you're ever really going to know, is that inside it is lead. It's the only thing I know about it, right? It's got lead in it. Um, other than that, I haven't thought about what it looks like, how it feels. I do know it's the width of the three-inch wide hole. Um, but apart from that, yeah, I really don't know much about it. So when you were like, tell me more about it, I was like, it's a plug. Um, <laughs> um, uh, is it Rico? It is Rico. Yeah, Rico. MVP. Um, it's a kind of a stupid one, but it was at sort of the beginning when we first met Birch, and he sent down the uh, the badgers, and then the the sort of ceiling collapsed, and they fell in, and he like <laughs> looked down and was just like, "Are you all right, my lovelies?" Hmm. Uh, made me chuckle. Yep. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Josh. Um. So my MVP goes to. Alessio slowly but surely becoming a conspiracy theorist. Um, I hope that by the time we get to resurrecting his mom, he's so wrapped up in things that he probably doesn't even want to anymore. You don't want to think his mom is part of it all. Well, 
Um, like it's all connected. Uh, Bruno? Never know. I kind of want to say, I don't know what to, what possessed me this session to, like, let him sink into this, like, theory. I don't know who thing, possessed I, you this session. But uh. I feel like, you know, especially, like, people that aren't quite, like, critical thinkers tend to fall into, like, these easy theories and conspiracies. And I kind of felt like Alessio, being a strategist himself, would fall into that even easier. Mm. So that's why I was like, let me become a conspiracy theorist. Um, so, yeah. Um... My my player highlights was Chiavo finally speaking to the book more than once a session because um, that gave us a little freedom to also interrogate something on the book um, and I thought it's a great mechanism. I love it. We can ask him questions and sometimes we get an answer, sometimes we don't. But um, the main thing is that like we actually resolve this plot point. Um, I'm so satisfied that like we've wrapped it and we're going to be able to move on out of um, Haralia. No. Alien. alien. Which which plot point have you solved? Oh, you mean the Sand Mountain? Alien. In you mean you solved yeah. the Sand Mountain? Is that what you're going? Yeah, at? yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, obviously you've, you gen alien. you've generated a whole lot of new questions, but yeah. Yeah, we we've solved like we didn't solve it. We just free the people inside because obviously you make it sound like I don't let you solve many things. The the dragon hasn't left, <laughs> right? What do you mean? He hasn't flown Cause, off, no. Because we no, need to inter yet. we need to ask his family, like how did you know? So yeah, I'm very excited about that, and that's probably my highlight. It's it's all the plot that's coming. The dragons are renowned for being chatty creatures, so probably winning to mm. answer all the questions. Well, he's he's not getting out of here because we fought too hard, and I will grapple this dragon until we have our answers. <laughs> yeah, cool. And you can be flown off to wherever he wants to go. <laughs> <laughs> I have wings now. I have wings. <laughs> yeah, they don't do. fly. Um. Okay, Thank and you. Joe. Um. So, yeah, with the, with the plug, I was just, it was such a, it was such a the simple, like, like not, it was like Nintendo 64 era Zelda room. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, like, I was imagining it properly. There's no details. It's just a room with an obviously magical effect in the middle with a plug that obviously just, there's, it's not really a puzzle. Just fucking close the thing. Yeah. But, um. I, and I liked it anyway, but no, really, it was. I can't believe Rico didn't take it because I think he laughed harder than I did. But when uh, when Alessio <laughs> takes that robe and wraps himself in the robe, he's like, "I'm going to disguise oh, yeah. myself with this robe." And James goes, "As what?" And he goes, "A grumpy old robe wearer." <laughs> Just like, well, you've wow. stolen mine. That's for sure. I was just uh, like, that was a good. A robe with the skies does not make. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've been really excited for you guys to find out about find, to find <laughs> out about the wild ones, right? To discover that they exist, mm -hmm. and more importantly, to discover that they've escaped their hole, right? My logic was that when you went to the York State and you saw this big swelling hole, you'd probably ask the really clever magical book that knows everything. Mm. And then when you saw another one, um, uh, Taylor, and you'd go, "Oh God, what's this?" And you'd ask the magical book, and you'd go, "Oh my God, they've escaped!" Right? That's how I pictured this plot. So, without Sebastian leaping in, you might have found the remnants of them, but you wouldn't actually have heard much about what was going on or anything like this, right? Um, so it's very interesting to me that we've actually got to this point, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think going back with Birch to his homeland is great, although something tells me that the party is going to go via the Oasis, the Way of the Path, up to the cornice, check out what's going on at that town. Then they get back on their boat. Then they stop at number 12 of the way of the path. Then they go up the river and they stop at number 14 and number 8. And then eventually they get to the entrance to Viralia, by which time they've completely forgotten why they're headed there. Um, that's my view of what's going to happen, but we'll see what does happen. We'll see. Um, we'll see. But yeah, uh, a couple of really sort of fun MVPs. Obviously, the introduction of Birch was a total fucking catastrophe and I loved it. Um... <laughs> You read an entire paragraph that was meant to be guidance as to what your character does and doesn't know, and now it's what the whole party knows and doesn't know because you just read it out, uh, which was great. Love that. Um, at first, I thought Birch was some um, sort of going to be this really like serious character who was desperately involved in the plot now and the story because obviously Sebastian wasn't very serious or particularly involved, and I thought like Birch was going to be this big contrast, and then you spent more time with the Badgers. Um, the, with the storyline, and I love that. Um, How I think. Ever think that. I just because he was a boundary warden, right? Who'd been sent with this mission, and like obviously he's like, he regards his boundary warden job as quite important. I he was a boundary warden because he was so obsessive with animals that yeah. everyone else, like, yeah, just put him on the wall. 
<laughs> yeah, okay. I, I can see it like that. But yeah, I just I hadn't pictured right. the character being the way it was. Um I absolutely loved all of the badger interaction. It was great fun. Um I, I love the idea yes. that when the badgers came up with the grasping vine bi binding vines, which isn't binding vines, right? Because you're animal flavoring it. Um, that they were still holding the sock and the cup and ball. That was a really cool bit of flavor. Um oh, you Hennig come out and find a random mushroom as well, just because why not? Yeah, do Hennig doing 150 damage in a fight is unheard of, right? I mean it's brilliant. Holy I love shit. that I love that somebody Insane, different dude. got to be the damage, right? Um yeah. this was a really tough fight, I think, if you didn't have access to that. Um that sort of almost guaranteed thunder damage. Because he normally rolls with advantage against spell effects. Um, so having him roll straight, first of all, for the con save, and then doing double damage with the damage, was it was so, so cool and so powerful. It was so great to see Hennig in a different spotlight. Um, and yeah. even more so, right, because the only way that our fighters were hitting anything was with Bardic Inspiration as well at the beginning. So it just felt like Hennig was such an integral part of this fight, and that was really cool. Because, mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, Joe Hennig often takes a very different role in combat. Um, so that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was super cool for me. I loved that. Um, yeah, it was great. Uh, but I think my real MVP goes to the moment where I was about to announce this really cool feat you were all getting, and Josh just goes, Get the the metallic dragon! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, there goes that fucking surprise. Um, yeah, so that's that's got to be my moment. Uh, but with that, that is where we're going to end, so if you guys would like to say goodbye. Goodbye! Bye. Bye. We shall see you soon. <laughs>